State for 316 yards and two TD passes last week. He was brilliant in defeat. Wide receiver Latif Brim was a huge weapon. Eight catches, 127 yards. This Panther package leads Pittsburgh against Kent next. Welcome everybody to historic Pitt Stadium in its final year of operation here on the Pitt campus. It's the Panthers playing host to the Golden Flashes of Kent from the Mid-American Conference. Beautiful day here in Pittsburgh, and we are glad you are with us. Hi, everybody. Dave Sims along with Jeff Bostick. Another big one today for the Pitt Panthers, trying to rebound from a tough loss last week at Penn State. Defense is a big theme for the Panthers. They say you can't take moral victories from last week against Penn State. Believe me, they can, and Pittsburgh starts with defense. Last week, they held Penn State to 65 total rushing yards, 1.6 a carry. Penn State coming into the game, 280 yards a game on the ground. A big reason, number 55, Brian Gonzalez. Five straight double-digit tackle games. Last week, he had 20 tackles. He's just a sophomore. Remember this name. He's going to be a good one. He's a guy we'll hear a lot about during this Big East season, no doubt about it. For Kent, it has been a struggle, a struggle for a while. They're 0-2, 15 straight losses in a row. However, their quarterback, Jose Davis, is a guy to be reckoned with this afternoon. Yesterday when we talked with Larry Coyer, the Pittsburgh defensive coordinator, his eyes lit up when we talked about the quarterback. He said their quarterback's a big-time player. You see the numbers. Already the career record holder in touchdowns thrown. More impressively, 43 touchdowns. He's only started 18 games. This guy's the real deal. It'll be interesting to watch number six this afternoon. So Kent is here in Pittsburgh, and Julian Graham is a guy that Jose Davis will probably see a lot of in this potent Pittsburgh defense. We tee it off right after this. This is a gorgeous Indian summer day here in western Pennsylvania. Here in Pittsburgh, you couldn't ask for better conditions. 70 degrees, humidity, no factor, and the forecast mostly sunny and pleasant. Right now, let's join the third member of our broadcast team, Mr. John Sanders. Dave, 75 years, nine national championships later, this is it for Pitt Stadium. The final year, it will be torn down, replaced by a convocation center and a new home for the Pitt basketball team. After one year at Three Rivers Stadium, they will move in the year 2001 to a new state-of-the-art stadium on the north side of Pittsburgh. It will seat 65,000 natural grass. It will be the best thing going, and hopefully for, for Pitt, one big step to a return to national prominence. But for this afternoon, one smaller step, a victory over Kent. There's a look at the head coach of the Kent Golden Flashes, Dean Pease. He's 50 years old out of Kenton, Ohio, and still looking for that first win. He's had a great career as an assistant coach. He served with Nick Saban at Michigan State, Lou Holtz at Notre Dame, amongst others. And Walt Harris in his third year at Pittsburgh. He'll be 53 years old on November 9th, and he looks forward to that new ballpark. Facility is what it's all about in terms of recruiting. Deep to receive for Kent, Sean Shoemaker, number 80 on your left. And number 16 is Jim Les. Here is Nick Lotz kicking off for the Panthers of Pittsburgh. And we are underway. Shoemaker will take it two yards deep. 10-15, breaks a couple of tackles and gets hammered down at the 20-yard line by Taryn Gray, number three for Pittsburgh. <laughs> 21 yards on the return for Kent State. For Kent, they'll uh, put it in play right at the 20-yard line. Number six is their quarterback. Jose Davis, his numbers for the year, he needs 547 more yards to become the all-time yardage leader. Kent, big arm scrambler. He could be... An interesting factor in our contest today. Run up the middle. Not much happening for DeMarlo Rozier, a running back for Kent. Take a look at the starting lineups for Kent. Jose Davis out of Bolero, Ohio. For the season, 44.9% his completion ratio. Jason Gavazda is the tight end. Four catches, two touchdowns this year. The left-handed center, Jeff Krizyak, out of Cleveland, Ohio, Holy Name High School, anchors that offensive line. Second down, call it nine. Test the middle again, this time big yardage, nobody home, straight up the middle. Rozier, it's a track race. 
And they bring him down at the 30-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle by Demetrius Rich. They found a soft spot picking up 49 yards. And Ken hit him with a short trap. Watch the left guard right there on DeMond Gibson. Good job by their left-handed center. I haven't seen that very often. If DeMarlo Rozier has breakaway speed at six, this is what Kent needed to get started. And yesterday, Larry Coyer, the defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, he was fearful of this offense. He said Navy didn't stop them last week. They stopped themselves. Bunch of fumbles, bunch of interceptions last week and a 48-28 loss to the Naval Academy. And I bet that shot in Pittsburgh. Here's Davis. Pitch it back to Shante Murphy. Murphy loses a couple of yards. Good play in that backfield by Mark Punko. You'll see a lot of him. He's an outstanding, strong safety. Here's a look at the Pittsburgh defense, anchored on that offensive line by Julian Graham out of Bartram High School in Philadelphia. Never quits. A little small for his position, working on uh, adding to his one sack total. Ryan Gonzalez, the defensive player of the week in the Big East, coming off an outstanding performance at Penn State. And Hank Poteet, first team all Big East last year, led the nation in interceptions with six. That's Brian Knight. They look for big things from him, the right defensive end. Second down, 12 for Kent. Davis to throw. Throws into triple coverage and completes it. About a seven-yard gain to Gavadza. Nice pick up there by Davis. And Gavadza with a big game last week. 115 yards receiving, two touchdowns. A big target, six foot four, 245. Gavadza last year with 19 catches, two touchdowns for Kent. Out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Send three receivers top of your screen here. Third and three. First drive of the game. Glad you're with us. Ball at the 24 of Pittsburgh. That's Shoemaker in motion. He's open in the flat. First down. 15 yard line and taken out of bounds there. So this can offense, Jet, Jeff, I'll tell you what, they have really put a stun into Pitt's defense. And you remember yesterday afternoon during the walkthrough, Larry Coyier was screaming about mental assignments. This is what Davis does. The ability to run the ball, throwing, running to his left. Shoemaker, big kickoff return last week, converting the first down. Larry Coyier was very, very guarded about this game. After such a great performance at Penn State, they let down this week. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. They're on Murphy, got nothing. Amir Porafoy, number 19, left linebacker, coming off a career-high 16 tackles at Penn State last week. Made the stop for Pittsburgh. Purefoy, local youngster out of Homestead, Pennsylvania, with Steel Valley High School. And don't you like it when they've got those sweatbands that have the codes for what the coaches are signaling in? <laughs> you know, what if one of the defensive guys rips the armband off? Do they have to call the game? Second down and 12 at the 15 for Kent. Murphy in motion. But the right side this time. Kent blitz. They look at the tight end. Find a break. The tackle to the five. Touchdown, Kent. Jason Gavadza. Nice play on the hookup from Jose Davis. And Kent takes a 6 0 lead. Very impressive opening drive for Kent. Jose Davis is a big part of it, but look at the tight end, number 46, Jason Gavadza. He did it last week with two touchdowns. Davis showing the poise and patience of a senior quarterback. Dave Pavich from Boca Raton, Florida, for the point after. Kent has taken the opening kickoff and driven it right down the field for a score. Point after is good. So a terrific start for a ball club trying to end a 15-game losing streak. Jason Gavadza, third touchdown of the season. Jose Davis does a great job standing in the face of the Pittsburgh Blitz. Kent Legion, 7-0 here at Pittsburgh. Batman Jason Gavadza has got Kent on the board, 7-0 against Pittsburgh. And Jeff, tell us about how this play developed. What happens, Gavadza breaks the tackle of pure four, but look at that block. Number 80, you, you think about wide receivers, well, what do they do? Well, what they did right there, good job by Shoemaker blocking. They pick up the blitz. Davis is poised in the pocket. Right there is the missed tackle. You got to make that play pure four. Big block downfield, that's what allowed the touchdown. 
So big kudos to Sean Shoemaker. Scoring drive, pretty impressive. They go 80 yards in seven plays, 334 off the clock, a 15-yard pass from Davis to Gavazza. And Walt Harris, bet he's got a lot of I told you so in him. I mean, and he remembers last year when their team played Penn State very tough and lost 20 to 13. After that, they never recovered and lost seven of the next eight games. Great you are. Davis kicking off. to the 42 yard line. Nicely done. Shante Murphy brought him down. So Hank Poteet among the nation's leader, the all purpose leader in the Big East, John Terman, junior college transfer. Fabulous last week against Penn State, 19 for 35, two touches, one pick, 316 yards. 50% on the season. He was the outstanding player of the game against Penn State last week. Good field position from a 41 for Pittsburgh. A delay. And a big hole up the middle. Down to the 46-yard line. Goes Mick Goings. Mick the junior out of Dublin, Ohio. Had two catches last week against Penn State as we check the Pittsburgh starting line. If you just saw Nick Goings transfer from Ohio State back in January of 98. Latif Grimm, watch him. First team all Big East last year. Nine catches so far on the season. Ethan Weedle anchors the offensive line, a third-year starter, and they had a team-high 26 knockdowns a year ago. First and 10 for Pitt. They're going to run Goings right side. Good block, but how about a better play by the defensive unit for Kent? Good job by Jeff Betts. Here's a look at Jeff. Checking out the Kent defense, Brad Hartman. He topped the ball club last year with six tackles for losses along that front line for Kent. Rashawn Hall, top tackler overall last year in 98 out of Canton, Ohio. And Gary McCullough, the uh, top tackler as we speak, coming into this afternoon's game. Second down and 10. Going. Got to bust it outside. And again, Betts involved on that play. Sean Hall as well, with Sean Hall number four. And what we've seen early from Kent's defense, certainly they're not as big as a lot of teams that we see week to week. They've got speed side to side, and this is the side of the ball they've had problems with, Dave, and they have a youth problem. Freshmen and sophomores dominate this defense. They have five freshmen and sophomores starting. When you look at their two deep, 22 players total, 13 of them are sophomore or younger. So that third down conversion for Kent, it has been a struggle. Check that for Pittsburgh. The blitz is picked up. Terman throws on the curl. A teeth grin to the 31st down Pittsburgh. Beat the coverage of Abdur Khan, number 24. And it was pretty good coverage by Khan. The young freshman out of High Point High School, Beltsville, Maryland. Little Tiny got 5'10", 166. Latif Graham has established himself as one of the big-time receivers in the Big East and in the nation. Good job of going up, fighting for the ball. And you saw how he got his body between the defender and the quarterback. Abdur Khan out of Beltsville, Maryland. He's a freshman. Tournament, they hammered up the middle. Kevin Farlow this time, the junior out of Pittsburgh's Peabody High School. Rashawn Hall again made the tackle. Second time we've called his name today. It was amazing yesterday talking with Walt Harris, the type of emotion that was expended from this team last week mm -hmm. at, at Penn State. And what had to be a heck of a football game, we kept watching the score and watching the updates. It would have been the shock of the 90s if Penn State would have gone down to Pittsburgh. About a five touchdown favorite. Swinging out to Barlow, nothing doing. That's a good play by Jeff Betts. Betts the strong safety, this top player in spring, winning the Jack Lambert Cup at Kent. Good job of noticing and, and recognizing the little swing pass and getting upfield and forcing the play. The only returning starter from the secondary, this is not easy, folks, to make an, a, a tackle in the open field like that. Good job by number uh, nine, Jeff Betts. Loss of six on that play. A third down spot for Pittsburgh. Kent leads it. Here comes the blitz. Terman stands in, throws, and 
Tried to get it to uh, Grimm on the curl again, but he was under some pressure. Ball may have been tipped. And Kent comes with a safety blitz. Number nine, Jeff Betts, once again coming through. Terman put on the turf. They're going to have to be forced into fourth down, and they're going to have to punt the football away. One of those things, a bad throw. Terman, not a good series there after uh, Hank Poteet set up Pittsburgh in great field position. Here's Greg DeBolt, averaging 41.7 yards per punt. Boy, he nuked this one. They will not have a chance to down it. About nine yards deep. And they don't pick up much yardage. And again, Jeff, no coffin corner attempt. We'll develop that a little bit later. We'll take a timeout. <laughs> Can't leave Pitt here in Pittsburgh, 7-0. Good looking, Walt Harris, his team trailing 7-0. We asked him about his defensive performance last week at Penn State. Our defense coordinator, Larry Coyer, and our defensive coaches have really uh, have a great defensive system. I know that firsthand because I go against them all spring and all fall, and it makes it very difficult for the offense coaches to move the ball. And they do a great job of uh, playing defense and motivating their players and putting uh, undersized players in position to compete against big oversized players and still get the job done that's what they did last week and that's what happened last week indeed and right now Kent leading 7-0 against the Pittsburgh Panthers Ryan Gonzalez I'll tell you what they did a number on him we didn't call his name in the first try first and 10 for the Golden Flashes from their own 20 Davis slipped and I tell you what he might have been able to find that little bit of a crease and that defense. Very unusual to see a quarterback with this type of mobility slip on, on turf that's as sticky and tacky as this when we were down on the field before the game. Extremely dry. This is what they call a fast track. Brim Thompson made that tackle. Right linebacker for Pittsburgh. Short game. Second down and eight. 22 yard line. Out of the shotgun. Make the run. Davis hangs. Throws it to Gavazza. Makes the catch at the 50-yard line. A good fake and better execution. Gavazza with the catch. Coverage by Ramon Walker. And Gavazza beat a double team, Jeff. And we talked about this kid in the open. Number six, Jose Davis. Career touchdown passing leader right now and adding. Good job with the ball fake. Gavazza for a 245-pound man able to get downfield. And he shows that he's got a little bit of speed. He gets behind number 25, Ramon Walker. 28 yards on the game. They run Rozier and nothing happening this time. Rozier with the big 49-yard run on the second play of the game. And they're waiting for him this time. Demond Gibson makes the tackle number 94, the left tackle. And when you're a school like Kent and you've, you've struggled to try and compete and, and play at this level, understand something. In the 13 games, that Dean Pease has been the head coach. They've been outscored 553 to 180. And that's not a misprint, boys. They are, looking, they are looking for confidence, and that's exactly what they found the first two series of this game. Go with a one-back look. Two wide outs. Curry and Shoemaker top of your screen. Now they drop Kavadza back and put him in motion. Second down and 10 from midfield. Davis swinging outside. Shante Murphy cuts inside, breaks a couple of tackles into pit territory to the 43-yard line. Gain of about seven on the play. Ryan Gonzalez, number 55, with the tackle. Good coaching staff player of the game last week was Gonzalez. Look at Davis, good-looking quarterback. Last week against Navy, Davis went 20-36. 279 yards. He did have a TD pass to Gavazza up a third down and four for the Golden Flashes from the pit 44. Out of the gun, they flood the top of your screen. Blitz comes, swinging outside, good catch by Murphy. First down and more to the 35-yard line. Call it the 34 as they move the ball. D.J. Dinkins with the tackle, a 10-yard pickup. First down, Kent. I'll tell you what, this offense belies the fact the way they're operating right now, Jeff, that they have lost their last 15 games. I'm very impressed with Charlie Molar, the offensive coordinator for Kent. 
Last play, a four wide set, an offset back. What they're doing, they're trying to spread the field and make Pittsburgh cover all of it right now. And these little quick passes are like a little toss, Dave. It's a way to run the football. Indeed. It's seven men, eight men in the box for Pittsburgh right now. First and 10. Davis, nobody home. Down he goes. <laughs> It's a good thing he did not pitch it back. We call that a Brian, blown assignment right there. Brian, Somebody went the wrong way. Brian Knight to tackle. John Sanders, what do you have? Well, we're down at the pit, uh, the Kent end of the field here this afternoon, and it's a hearty group of fans, cheerleaders. You can see their colors are, if your team has lost 15 in a row, you have to be a hearty fan. Their colors like pits are blue and gold, but it wasn't always that way. Originally, they were orange and purple. Unfortunately, they sent the uniforms to the laundry. They came back blue and gold. It's been blue and gold ever since. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, where, where does John find this stuff? <laughs> they have all mixed up. Uh, they, they colored laundry, a white laundry at some point or another, and messed up. Second down, 13 at the 38 outside again. That gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Catch made by Shoemaker. Thompson, number 22 with the tackle. And he had, sure he had Joshua Bostic open down the middle of the field. Very impressed with this young man, number six, Jose Davis. Plants his feet. He's got some zip on the football. That's what we call a frozen rope. Didn't pick up much yardage. He had number one, Joshua Bostic. No relation, believe me. There's never been a Bostic that's been a wide receiver. <laughs> We're typically what? closer to the action. Why does that not surprise us? Third down play, 11 to go from the pit 35. Waning moments. First quarter, out of the gun, blitz comes. Davis rolls, throws, got him in, and incomplete to Bostic. He was open. It was not a good throw, but the receiver had found another seam in that defensive backfield. Bring up fourth and 11. And as the pit defenders come off the field, there's about three of them holding their hands up. There's a little bit of questioning right now. You can't do that on defense. You have to react. Jim Less out of Landisville, Pennsylvania, the punter, averaging just under 40 yards per kick. Tim Stein deep to receive for Pittsburgh. Good snap. No pressure. They let him kick. Gets it up high. Shoemaker down. Oh, that's a great play. That is an outstanding play by Sean Shoemaker. Downs it at the one-yard line. The wide receiver got his job done. So Pittsburgh is pinned back. Kent will have fabulous defensive field position. That punt covering 34 yards, a beauty by Les. Got a timeout here at Pittsburgh. And right now some long faces on the pit sideline as Sean Schumacher, the wide receiver, does his job. The good hands people, he downs it at the one. Pitts in a big hole. Welcome back, everybody. Good luck at the Pittsburgh campus. Right now, Kent leading. Yes, they are. Kent leads 7 0. Took the opening drive 80 yards over seven plays. 334 took Davis to Gavatsa. The 15 yard pass. Just joining us. Kent has just pinned Pittsburgh here at the one with a gorgeous punt down by Sean Shoemaker. Here's Terman. Tough throw. And down goes Grimm immediately, covered by Abdur Khan for a short pickup for the Panthers. Now let's take a look at our Big East leader brought to you by Volkswagen. Tackles per game. You see with Pittsburgh's defense, three of the top four tacklers in the conference. Led by number 55, Ron Gonzalez, 15 and a half tackles. Last week, 20 tackles against Penn State. That's impressive at any time. That'll shorten your neck. Second down and six, five yard line. Got to be careful, Barlow. They made him cut back into the pursuit. He got it up to the nine yard line. Ryan Altzer with Matt Rail with the tackle. Rail, number 22. Barlow with the carry, a junior from Pittsburgh. Pretty inconsistent last year. As a high school senior, senior he was second team all state. He's a top rusher last year for the Panthers with 533 yards. And that's what Walt Harris talked about yesterday. We are inconsistent. How can they hold a Penn State team ranked at the time second in the nation to 65 yards rushing? Kent has 45 in the first quarter. Third down, can they pick it up? Barlow, tough yardage, I believe he did. Not with a lot to spare, but I think he got the first down. Running inside that defensive line, Rashawn Hall. Linebacker came up to make the tackle. And Pittsburgh indeed does pick up a first down. 
Hey, Jeff, you got to tell me something. If you're on the sideline right now, if you're the coaching staff and you're down 7 0 Pittsburgh after the great game last week, I mean, what's going through your mind? Well, you hope your players wake up. I mean, that's the one thing. And it's, it's easy to look down. When you look at the records, you look at the numbers, they haven't won a football game in 15 weeks. Sometimes you play down to your opponent. Blitz, get it outside, drop the ball. It was wide open. Barlow was there and had some running room. Ryan Alt Altizer was there, the senior from Centersburg, Ohio. Barlow, good reason to be upset with himself. Glad you are with us here at Pitt Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for Big East football on ESPN+. Plus. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostig and John Sanders and our Big East crew. Gorgeous day. And right now, a big surprise with Kent leading 7-0 with a buck 29 to go. Second down and 10 at the 11 for the Panthers. Thurman, hands off to going. Classic sweep running left side and Tackle made by Richard Bender, number 92, the backup left tackle. He's a senior out of Pittsburgh's Brentwood High School. So a bunch of uh, Pittsburgh area kids making a homecoming here for Kent. And it looks like their fullback, number 38, Chris Viola, is down on the field, shaking up. Watch the left of your screen, number 38, right there. Going into lead block, gets a helmet on him. Good job right there. Now the running back rolls right Ooh. up his ankle. You wonder why? Look at his back. Look at the torque on his back. Oh, jeez. And then he gets shoved from, from uh, in front, too. And that's one of the downsides to playing on artificial surfaces. If he were on grass, maybe he's able to get his foot out, but he's walking off the field, which is a good sign. Probably lucky that he didn't break his ankle right there. Mm -hmm. Chris Fiola. Boy, I've been there and done that before. That's not fun. Yeah, you don't want to revisit it any time no, soon. No, I'm either. not going to. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Chris out of North Hills. Pittsburgh, two of three on third down situations thus far. Third and five at the 16. German to throw. He's got some time. Nice zip on that ball. That's a completion. Out to Latif Grimm. That's a first down for the Panthers to the 25-yard line. Nashville Dyer, one of the all-time names in college football, a sophomore from Riviera Beach, Florida with the tackle. And they call this a catch. Believe me, young people, this is, watch his hands. Watch Latif Grimm's hands right there. He doesn't use his body, uses his hands. Good job of throwing catch. I'm impressed with Thurman. Good For a kid that makes his first start at Penn State and puts up 316 yards, something special there. Barlow, the lone setback, he gets the call. And cutting back inside. Good job by the corner there. Jeff Betts, a strong safety, forced him back inside. Matt Rail made the tackle as we look at other numbers from around the Big East. That was a great game last year. BC Navy, Navy won it late, 32-31. West Virginia's won its last three against Maryland. Temple still looking to score a point. Penn I'm going to bet Miami. they score before the year's over. A <laughs> <laughs> couple of big national games, too, huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. Michigan and Syracuse. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Purdue leading Central Michigan. Second down and eight at the 27. Oh, we got just a little bit of an offside. Just a little bit offside was Antonio Bryant, the freshman from Miami. I don't even know why the officials have to huddle here. I mean, he was eight yards downfield. This is pretty simple. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remain second down. They love Bryant. They love his talent. They need him to, he's a freshman though. They need and him to these calm are down. the things that happen to football teams. We saw early with Barlow, the drop pass. We see the penalty with uh, Bryant when you're not focused and on top of your game. Guarantee you this did not happen last week at Penn State. Not at all. Well, we've got 15 minutes complete here at Pittsburgh. And in a surprise, an eyebrow raiser can't lead Pittsburgh 7 0. The Golden Flashes have a 7-0 lead over Pittsburgh as we begin the second quarter. Take a look at our Buick first quarter stats. And how about that number there, time of possession, Jeff? Time of possession is a big one. Eight minutes and 16 seconds for Kent. Typically, Dave, the first two games, they've averaged 21 minutes, 35 seconds. That time of possession is a big stat. It keeps their defense off the field. Second down, 13 from the 22-yard line. Turn four of six, 20 yards. Going for more. Got time. 
tipped it over the middle, and what a collision by number 22, Matt Rail, and number four, Rashawn Hall, and Hall the loser in that matchup. My goodness. And Terman throwing into a crowd, trying to hit number five, uh, Kenny Ketchin. Interesting story. This kid was in the uh, Desert Storm uh, battle. He's the oldest guy on the team. He's 27 years old. You can't throw into a crowd like this, but watch the collision. Hit the guy in the different jersey. You know, if you wear the same jersey, don't hit it. Not pretty. Terman going to roll out. Flyer down the sideline. Latif Grimm right at the first down yardage. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like they're going to give him just enough for the first down for Pittsburgh. Abdur Khan covering for Kent. This is a way of welcoming a true freshman to college football. Abdur Khan, High Point High School, Beltsville, Maryland, a true freshman. On the other side of the ball, Nashville, Dyer, a redshirt freshman. When you look at the game, Latif Graham is a premier receiver in the Big East and nationally. And the coaches are raving about Antonio Bryant. You think there's a mismatch, and look at the, the wide receivers for Pitt to really give the guys on uh, Kent's defense on the corners a lesson. 14-yard pickup on the fourth catch by Grimm, and running hard up the middle is Nick Goings. It's close to the 40. Rashawn Hall, tell you what, he has been one active linebacker, number four for Kent today. And this is when your defense has to stand up and make a play. How many times do you often say, well, this is a 38-yard drive, and you're not to the 40-yard line? Yeah, right. But this is the type of drive that time-consuming, and it takes a lot of sting out. Somebody needs to stand up and make a play for Kent right now. Second and seven at the 39. Tension and Grimm, bottom of the screen. Try to run it. A lot of cutting. Heck of a move. Look at this. Bra, he can go. Coast to coast. 20, 10. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Great play. 61 yards by Kevin Barlow. This is an example of first, second, and third effort. Number 43, Kevin Barlow, simply was not going to be tackled. You couple that with bad tackling by Kent's defense, and what you have is a 61-yard touchdown. Well, I thought he was done about four or five times there and kept the balance. He's a good-sized running back at 6'1", 235. And the 61-yard run caps off a 99.9-yard drive. Yes, it does. Nick Lotz. Five of six in his point afters so far this season in the first two games. High snap, it's put down, lots of things it through. Now we've got a 7-7 ball game. Minute 20 into the second quarter. Kevin Barlow will remember this first touchdown run of the 99 season for a while. It was a beauty, and Pitt is back in the game tied at seven. Rushing touchdown by the Pittsburgh Panthers on this young 1999 season. Tied the game at 7, 13.40 to go. And it's all about missed tackles here, Jeff. Missed tackles and extra effort. Barlow with a big move right there, misses one tackle. Rashawn Hall right there, number two, three tackles he's breaking. Right here's the big one, three, four, five. And once he gets past the linebackers, it's clear sailing. 61 yards, five missed tackles, a 99-yard touchdown drive. Watch his footwork. His footwork, it never stops. Two cuts, three cuts. And right there's the big one, the spin. Folks, you got to make tackles when you're out on the football field. Nashville Dyer, the last man in the picture, number 11, didn't have a chance because Barlow had the angle. Good-looking drive by Pittsburgh. That was a big play. Latif Grimm did catch one a pass for 14 yards. Shoemaker with the return. He finds some room and tumbles ahead. To the 26-yard line, brought down by Ramon Walker, number 25 for Pittsburgh. The Dean Peeves will be wondering, what the heck is going on? We got a good thing happening for us, and then the defense has a humongous breakdown. 18 yards on that return. And he's talking to Ryan Alt Altizer, number 56, an outside linebacker. And that is Dean Pees. Specialty. Defensive coordinator at Michigan State and did a great job working with Lou Holtz at uh, Notre Dame in 94. Well, Jose Davis. 
Try to break the tie here. He's seven for eight, 80 yards and a touchdown. Great fake. All day to throw. And then runs out of time. Here comes the Cavalry. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Julian Graham was there, among others. Mike White, 97 as well. And this is when they really miss uh, Jerron Kelly, number three, a wide receiver, probably their best receiver, who missed last week's game against Navy, is not going to play this afternoon because of a shoulder. And it's familiarity. Receiver, quarterback. Uh, Jose Davis has proven he can put the ball in the receiver's hand. Now it's time to acquaint yourself with the receiver. A look at the left handed center draw. Shante Murphy, big room. Right up the middle, gain of nine. Amir Purifoy, number 19, with the stick. Larry Courier, the defensive coordinator, into gray hair in the glasses as we look at Purifoy Pittsburgh. Coach's booth. And Larry Courier is a football coach. You know, there are show horses and there are work horses. Larry Coyer is not a show horse. He is a workhorse. Very intense during the walkthrough yesterday. Very impressive football coach. Third down one. Short yardage situation. Davis. They move the pile. He picks up the first down. Dave, how many times have you seen a left-handed center? I'll tell you what. I can remember. I, I can remember going back watching football when I was a kid. Chuck Bednarik, the two-way center for the Eagles. I, don't, I can't remember anybody from then to now till I've seen this kid with the left hand. I broke my right hand and I tried to snap it left-handed one year. You're talking about awkward. <laughs> I'm sure the quarterbacks didn't like it. It's either. almost like you got two left shoes. Watch it. This is not a misprint. We're not looking into a mirror. We have a left-handed center. Remarkable. First and ten at the 37. Davis to throw. Blitz screen. They throw it up the middle. Fumble. This ball. Boy, that ball was up for grabs. And uh, Jason Gavadza, the tight end, another one of the sure hands people, he was in there to make the grab. Kareem Thompson made that play happen defensively. Good job of Kent protecting their quarterback, Pittsburgh, coming with the blitz. I'm not sure this is a reception. Uh, Kareem Thompson, number 22, is there about the time the ball gets there. Bats it away. Kent is lucky to get. Here's why you win and lose football games, folks. Pittsburgh a plus five. Kent a minus five on the turnover ratio. Second down, 12 at the 35. Run with Shante Murphy. Not a lot doing there. Near four for We're calling his name a lot. Stop that play. Blockers got out there, but didn't really knock anybody down. Gain of one. Henry Rucker and Brian Hallett. Lineman got out there pretty cleanly. Didn't really do a good job clearing the way. Early on here in the second quarter, tie ball game. Gavad's in motion. Davis throws, he hits Gavad to the 45. It'll be about a yard short. Real close to the first down. Cody Miller with the tackle for Pittsburgh. Gavatza having a great day. Racking up catches. Came in with four. He's got the TD pass today. Cody Miller still injured. Like the left side is where he suffered his injury. Gavatza five catches, 60 uh, yards and a touchdown so far. And there was a tight end that revolutionized the tight end position. It kind of wore a uniform that looks like Kent's. Name was Kellen Winslow. Mm hmm Boy, was he good or what? All of Famer. And we're looking at a gutsy call early in this football game. Fourth down in inches. Kent is choosing to go for it. And he lost 15 in a row. What the hay? Fourth and short. And motion. On the fullback, well, I tell you what, this going to be awfully close. Dante Murphy. I tell you what, if he got the first down, he may have gotten it by about an inch. He did not have a lot of room. They did a great job jamming up the middle. The thing you have to have, look at the offensive movement, or lack thereof. Good job by Pittsburgh's defensive lineman. It's all about pad level. 
Damon Gibson, number 94, number 91, Nigel Neal. Good job of securing the middle, holding it down. He did Pittsburgh not, is led by defense. He did not get the first down. So Kent fails to convert on that fourth down. And a good job by the Pitt defense. We'll take a timeout from Pitt Stadium. It's a 7-7 ball game. Boston College and Mike McMahon, one of the bright quarterbacks in the conference. They'll get it together next week. Check your local listing. Panthers bring in David Priestley at quarterback. Give him an opportunity. First throw. A little short as he tried to get it to his tight end, Ben Kopp, the senior from New Kensington, Pennsylvania. Nashville Dyer covering on the play. Good look at David Priestley. His numbers now on the season complete up to that last play. He's out of Los Alamitos, California. Transfer from Ohio State. 6'4", 200. He's a sophomore. Pretty athletic player. Good size for quarterback, too. He and Terman, two big guys. Second and 10 from the Kent 46. Big hole. Good cut by going. Inside the 35 to the 33, Gary McCullough, the free safety, prevented further damage. Good job by the offensive line for Pittsburgh. Number 76, Ryan Hansen, Brian Anderson, the right side, totally collapsing Kent's defense. And an all Big East name, Hiawatha Downey, the left guard pulling up for you. Gotta like Nick Goings. Six foot, 215 pounds, gained 2,600 yards his senior year and scored 38 touchdowns. The Ohio High School Player of the Year. Here's a look at Ryan Hanson. Another running play. Try to get it outside. Farlow, nice cut. Look at that. Four, five, six players need to bring him down. They get his forward progress down to the 25-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Let's go down to the sidelines and John Sanders. Dave, officially number 12 on the pit roster is Rod Rutherford. He's a backup quarterback. But in the Walt Harris era, number 12 is the students. They have four sections of Pitt Stadium devoted specifically to them. They were shocked in the first quarter, but now with that long run and the defense settling in on that fourth down play, the 12th man could become a factor as the game goes on. All right, John, thank you. Good information. Barlow, seven-yard gain. He's got six rushes for 79 yards. He's got the TD run of 61. Blitz. Priestley. Throws it down the sideline, and it's out of bounds. And tried the, to get it to his tight end, Kirk McMullen. And with a quarterback change, this may be Walt Harris's way of playing mind games with Terman. And he talked about the quarterbacks yesterday. He said, you know, both of these kids can play. What we're looking for is consistency. Last week, Terman was awfully good at Penn State. And he started out early. He struggled. You put the kid on the bench. You let him think about it for a little while. I'm going to bet before the afternoon's over, we'll see him back. Herman on the day, 5 of 8 for 35 yards. Goings. The, the Goings was rough on that one. I got that out of my system. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Roy Atia. You feel better about yourself. Yeah, now, I know. You? I let it hang there, so just knock it out. Be fourth and short. Now we're going to see if Pittsburgh decides to go for it. Nobody's coming on the field. I like it. And I like what uh, Kent did on their last possession. Fourth down and one. I think what a coach's mentality when you've lost 15 straight games. If we can't pick up half a yard, we don't deserve to win. The bit has done thus far. Shaky on the exchange. Goings, I don't know. I don't think he got it. That uh, exchange was very shaky between Priestley and his center, Jeff McCurley, Matt Rail. A number good job by Matt Rail and also a good job by number 42, Gary McCullough. What kills short yardage plays are penetration. And right there, 22, good job of tackling Matt Rail. You got to drive the guy back. Good job keeping your head up. And he says, no, they didn't make the first down. He was in the hole, and I think he knows from his, uh, his base point that he was at the line of scrimmage and he drove the guy back. So this mark's not even going to be close, Dave. They're about a half a yard short. Okay. Call. So in successive possessions, both teams failed to get fourth and ones. Kent will take over. So they only lose on that exchange, 23, 24 yards. Time out on the field in a 7-7 game. We'll be right back. Game a surprise with Pittsburgh coming in a big favorite. 8-15 to go, and both teams 
on successive possessions and failed to convert on fourth and one situations. BC leading at Navy 7 3 as we check out the big right. scores. West Virginia and Maryland. Mountaineers going for their third straight win against Maryland. Purdue on top of Central Michigan. So here comes the Kent Golden Flashes from their own 23, Jose Davis. He takes the pitch, and I tell you what, somebody got an ankle, and it's a good thing he did because he got to the 30, a good-looking gain of about seven yards. Brian Knight, number 57, with the tackle for Pittsburgh. This is Big East football. Glad you're with us here at Pittsburgh at historic Pitt Stadium. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders and our Big East crew when we got another Pittsburgh Panther player injured on the field. And it is Julian Graham, their fine defensive end, the senior out of Philadelphia. And it looks like he hurt his right knee, Dave. Oh, this is not good. Julian out of John Bartram High School. Career high three and a half sacks last year. Let's see if we can find him here, Jeff. It looks like he gets caught in a down block by the tight end. He is walking off the field under his own power. That's a one. I love Yogi Berra's comment. Don't trust anything a cow won't eat. <laughs> I am not a big fan of AstroTurf. The game is supposed to be played on grass and mud and you know elements and don't don't give us a track we're not running a track game right we were playing a football game play on grass and mud and dirt it. make it like the old days we look at brian knight out of buffalo new york st joseph's high school brian gonzalez saddlebrook new jersey and gonzalez has been very quiet thus far yes he has second and three at the 30 for kent davis is going to throw got protection they set up the screen almost picked off instead they get it to shante murphy Murphy to the 38-yard line, first down, Kent. Great pass. Mark Ponko finally brings him down, number 14, the strong safety for Pittsburgh. You have to be impressed with the poise of Jose Davis, the senior quarterback. They set the screen, and to set up the screen, you have to be a great actor. There's only one thing I would do differently. Watch number 75, Victor Vrabel, right there. Don't turn back and block behind the play. The last time I checked, running backs will outrun line. <laughs> yes, indeed. Eight yards on the game. Trips receivers to the right. Top of your screen. Shoemaker in motion. First down play. He reverses. They'll roll that way. Davis throws back at a man wide open. Makes the catch at the 20. Eight yard line. That's Joshua Boston. A first down for Kent. That was gorgeous. Demetrius Rich. On the coverage for Pittsburgh and Jose Davis, no wonder Larry Courier was a little bit anxious yesterday. There's only one word that describes the way this pass was thrown. Perfection. The timing, the perfection, great. Right on the fingertips of number one Joshua Bostic and a good job of catching the football when you're wide open. 33 yards of the completion of Bostic. For Bostic, his sixth catch of the season. First and ten, up the middle they run with DeMarlo Rozier. Not a lot happening there as they start from the 29-yard line. Honko and Gibson on the tackle for Pittsburgh. If I were Kent, I would quit running at number 94, DeMond Gibson. They should have learned on fourth down when they missed it. He, he was a big part of it. And it seems like this young man's been here about seven years along with Hank Poteet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Started as a freshman, Poteet, All-American candidate. These kids have been around. They've been through the tough times. Yes, they have. Second down, nine. 28-yard line for Kent. Multifaceted offense for the Golden Flashes. Get it outside, Murph. Thought he might, might have thrown it. Got to the edge as he beat the right defensive end, Brian Knight. Honko comes up to make yet another tackle. Honko number 14, the cousin of one of your former teammates, Russ Grimm, and an All-American here at Pitt. Second cousin of Russ Grimm, and uh, I really enjoyed what Russ had to give uh, his second cousin, Mark Honko, in advice. Just perform. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Just perform. And that's exactly what he's done. He came here as a walk-on, and now he's a scholarship athlete. 
Ken calls a timeout. I don't think they like the personnel setup, but they are driving. They started from their own 23 after stopping Pitt on a fourth and one. Kent driving in a 7-7 seven, seven game, 6.02 to go, second quarter. Big East football, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Kent out of the Mid-American Conference. Tied with Pittsburgh. Let's go to John Sanders for an injury update. Update on Julian Graham. They took a look at the inside of his right knee. They pulled the brace back up. He stretched it a little bit. And Dr. Freddie Fu, their orthopedic surgeon, says he will be back in the football game. Good news, John. Thank you. Big play here on this long drive by Kent. Big play, a 33-yard hookup. Davis to Bostic. Third down and three at the 22. And Julian Graham back in the game, number 45. Bostic in motion. Davis to throw. Gets it outside. And not a heck of a lot doing there. Maybe a, a gain of one. That'd be generous as he got it to Shoemaker. Ponko with the stop. Third tackle on this drive for Ponko. And I'm really surprised they're going for the field goal. They've already gone for it on fourth down at their own 46-yard line. Right. You haven't won a game in 15 weeks. Uh, why don't we try and stick it in the end zone? Well, not only that, how about the fact that they didn't seem to get a lot, a lot of yardage on that play? That was really shocking. Pavich is one for three on field goal tries this season, and he's good from 37 yards out. So Kent regains the lead. 10 to 7. Second time the Golden Flashes have led. And I know we've only watched a little bit over 20 minutes of football. It's amazing to me that this Kent football team has not won a game in all of 1998, thus far in 99, and a couple games back in 97. Uh, this is a well-coached football team. When you look at their offense, multiple offensive fronts. You see the brain trust for, for Kent right there. Uh, Charlie Moeller right there, the closest guy, too, who's calling the offense and, and calling quite a good offensive scheme right now. Three and four wide receiver packages, two tight ends. The whole key to their offense is number six of Jose Davis. Well, he is poised, got a nice arm, sees the field, good feet. I mean, he's got a good package. Jose and some Davis. of the alumni of Kent are very impressive when you go through their media guide. Jack Lambert, Don number 99 for the uh, Golden Flash as many years ago. I probably registered the last personal foul against Jack Lambert. <laughs> the 1984 Pro Bowl, I kind of hit him in the back, and you know, Jack didn't have a lot of uh, tolerance for that, so he kind of took a swipe at me. Sure. <laughs> sure. Finish that up a little bit later. Here's Hank Boutique on the 15. A lot of running room. Almost runs into his own man. And McCullough, number 42, blasts him down after he was turned back in by Abdur Khan. That's a nice return by Hank Boutique. Off a short kick, 21 yards by Hank on that return. Terman is back in at quarterback for the Pittsburgh Panthers. David Priestley had one series, and that led to six plays and a stoppage on a fourth and one at the 23. First and 10 for the Panthers. 10-7, Kent, Barlow, and Moothart are the running backs. Not a good throw to Latif Grimm. Terman had his man wide open, but did not make the play. Is that a function, function of being on that sideline and not That's being loose? That's a function of nerves right there. The only thing I noticed, it's kind of like hitting a golf ball. Once you hit the golf ball, you can't bring it back. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Let the ball go. Straight up the middle there run with Moothart, his first uh, carry today at four brushes for 12 yards last week against Penn State. Brad Hartman, number 90, brings him down. Hartman on the When we talked to Walt Harris yesterday, he's talking about building a new trend. Uh, you know, they're obviously going to build a new stadium, but building a new tradition here. There were three key words that they used, commitment, teamwork, and pride. And you can certainly sense that from meeting with him yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Good play here. Third and five for Terman. Blitz. It's picked up. Terman throw way short. Not close. What happened on that one? Watch his left foot. 
This is what we call a bad throw, but it's all about your footwork. When you're a quarterback, you have to have your feet planted to throw the football. Watch his left foot. Watch the angle that it swings. See it swinging out to the left? You bet. It's opening up. The ball is grossly underthrown. He can't even explain that to Walt Harris. Walt Harris doesn't want to hear any of that. <laughs> Not much of an audience right now. Greg DeVolt, remember him last week? LeVar Arrington, the All-American from Penn State, went after him, and this young man held his own. That's a good-looking kick. Shoemaker from the 17 and down. He goes quickly. Good coverage by Demetrius Rich for Pittsburgh. 42 yards on that punt by DeBolt. Check some scores. Navy and BC holding at 7-3. And Maryland is taking a lead on West Virginia. And Maryland's 2-0 this year. Ron Vanderlyn and their head coach. Virginia. Purdue is kicking Central Michigan 31-3. They're laying waste. And you talked about the punter and his uh, exploits last week with uh, Mr. Arrington at Penn State. He also got into a little altercation with Rod Rufford, Rufford the, uh, the young quarterback out of uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, big recruit for them. He's got a couple scrapes on his forehead if we get a shot later. From the 19-yard line, Kent looking to build on this lead. They run Shante Murphy. Nice push straight up the middle. Murphy has uh, acquitted himself quite nicely today. So is the offensive line for Kent. Hupp, Brable, Rusiak, Hallett, and Goodspeed up front. Dean of, uh, let's call it five. And we talked about the youth of their defense. Kent is only going to lose two of the people up front. Good speed in Gavadza, but the one that's going to be really hard to replace is the quarterback, Jose Davis. From the 23-yard line. Long count. Option. Davis, good play defensively by Pittsburgh's 97 and 58. Ryan Smith was there as well as Mike White. Kevin Hallett, injured Kent player on that field right now. Hallett number 71, the right guard. Three twenty-three to go in the second period. John Sanders, what do you have? Getting ready for our national car rental halftime report. We'll check in on the national notebook. Some big games coming up, and of course today in the Big East, there are a couple of very important games that impact not only the Big East Conference but the national scene as well. And we're going to look in depth at those games, update all the scores that we have, and we will take a look at the Big East wire as well. All of that is coming up at halftime on the national car rental halftime report. Gentlemen, back to you. John, thank you very much. We look forward to that. And Kevin Jamison's in the lineup to uh, replace Brian Hallett. Jamison, a Richard freshman out of Niles, Ohio. 6'3", 288, big play here, third and six at the 23. Davis drawing a little bit too high to Joshua Boston. That's a tough throw. Surprising that you have your quarterback roll to the left, throw against his body. The ball sells on him. It's really the bad, the first bad throw that he's made all afternoon. Bostic had a big catch in the previous drive that set up a 37-yard field goal by Pavich to get the lead. Ready to punt is Jim Les. Hank Poteet. Les gets into this one. Poteet calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 41-yard line. The middle will have pretty good field position to start this drive. Make sure you're with us next week on many of these same stations as Boston College and Rutgers in conference play. Chris Hovan, the outstanding nose tackle for BC, and Mike McMahon, fine quarterback for Rutgers. Rutgers looking for its first win, 0-2 on the season. Losses to California and Texas. Mr. Hovan's probably still wearing that facial makeup, that he black. He's got it all over his face. He loves that John Randall look. His tournament, much better throw this time. The completion down to Bryant. Big gain for Pittsburgh into Kent territory. Antonio Bryant as Terman throwing with a lot more confidence this time. 
Ryan Altizer with the stop for Kent. And a guy that really gets the attention of uh, Walt Harris, Antonio Bryan, a true freshman. First catch today, first two games of the season, eight catches, 15.7 yards per reception and two touchdowns. He's going to be a playmaker. 18 yards on that catch. There's another throw to the middle. Terman now looking like a big timer again. The curl pattern, crossing pattern rather by Bryan, his second one. McCullough on the stop for Kent. But I tell you what, nice and easy. You used the golf a analogy uh, before, Jeff. He's throwing nice and easy, not trying to force it, and the body mechanics, the hips, the feet are all right. And this is a four route. This is a little inside. Good job of uh, number 80, Antonio Bryant, running the pattern. And term it's all about confidence. You know, quarterbacks, and it starts with the basics. When you're having problems hitting the golf ball, go to your pro, and he's going to tell you, you know what? Start with your grip, your stance. And same thing with the, with the quarterback. When he's having problems delivering the football, go back to his footwork. 17 yards on that pickup. Terman's numbers to this point. Boy, it's amazing. After that last possession, Pitt did a three and out. Two horrible throws by Terman. He comes back here, looks all world, and picking up 35 yards in two, uh, in two plays. John Sanders, talk to us. What do you have? Well, a reminder of what can we have coming up at halftime as a deeper look inside the Big East. There are a couple of outstanding Big East matchups coming up later this afternoon. And then another one tonight. We'll have the Big East Wire. All the highlights, of course, from the first 30 minutes of play coming up on the National Car Rental Halftime Report. I hope they've got a television in the airport. <laughs> here, here. I'm going to be there till 8.30. <laughs> Goings and Fiola. And the running backs behind Terman from the 25-yard line. Protection. Slam. It's Bryant again. They love this matchup with Bryant. Fumble. It says they have it, but the line judge is saying, no, sir. That play ends right there. McCullough. A forlorn look on his face. First down, Pittsburgh. That's three straight first down passes. All to Bryant. If you're Latif Graham, you have to wonder, has he got a new wide receiver? Folks, I'm, watch this. Is the ball out? Yes, it is. Ooh, yes, indeed. Good job by number 21, Murad Holiday. Bryant, three catches, 48 yards. Down to the 11-yard line. Terman back to throw. They pick up the blitz. Swing it outside. Great catch. Look at that effort. Outstanding performance by Nick Goins. He was going down. They made the catch and eluded the tackler. That was outstanding. And going back to the huddle, number nine, Jeff Betts. The senior strong safety clapping his hands. He knows he should have made this play. Terman, this takes touch right here. Right there, he overran it. Look at the effort by Goings, keeping his balance, using his left hand. Pittsburgh takes another timeout. Good looking uh, six yard pass. If there ever was one down to the five yard line, Pittsburgh calls a timeout. 129 to go and Pittsburgh threatening to take the lead right here. Pittsburgh has been streaking. I think this gets back to what Walt Harris told us yesterday. We need to get some type of uh, consistency. And they've been very sporadic. One drive, they drive 99 yards and they look like an all-world team. The next drive, they're three plays and out. And the key is Terman. Terman is the key to their offense and their consistency. Young man. 6'4", 215, a junior out of Walnut Creek, California. Transferred in from Los Medanos College, where he passed with 3,000 plus yards, 27 touchdowns in two years. Let's go back down to the sidelines and John Sanders. Well, you have some technical problems. We'll get to John in a minute, but how about these Panther NFL first round picks? Some names that you know. Matter of fact, a couple of names that you played with and against. I played against Tony Dorsett. I had to coach, play against a, a coach team by Mike Ditka. And you're talking about, I played with Mark May, you know, Hugh Green, played with all these guys, Dan Marino, Bill, I mean, the name goes on and on, on and on. Here we go, second down. And four from the five, Terman on the rollout. Got some protection in the end zone. They give it to him? No, they said he's out of bounds. Latif Grimm went back to their premier receiver after featuring Bryant on three catches here in this drive. 
So 128 to go. Clock stops. It's third down and four. Third down and four. Ball at the five-yard line for Pittsburgh. What do you look for here since Terman's had the hot hand on this drive yet? I would go to my wide receiver number 80, Antonio Bryan. He's been hot. Get your quarterback out of the pocket. Bryant, bottom of your screen. They look that way. Fade pattern. Ball in the air. Can't get it. Good coverage. Very good coverage by Kent. Down on that play. Number 18, Justin Baum. Well, this is what you want. You want your wide receiver isolated man-to-man. -man. This is a tough throw. Mm -hmm. Antonio Bryant running into the corner of the end zone. Good job of defense by number 18, Justin Baum. You can't defense him any better, folks. Did he get his right arm in there a little bit early? 22 yards on the field goal attempt coming up. Big lots. Snap, kick is up. And we've got a tie ball game. 22-yard field goal by Nick Watts. Ties the game at 10-10. And what a difference that drive made. Bryant with three catches, 48 yards. A highlight of that drive for Pittsburgh. Well, I tell you what, Jeff, as people around the country see this score, you think they'll be going, you know, hitting their heads, going, wait a minute, wait a minute. Excuse me, what's that score? And how many times does a football team, speaking about Pittsburgh, last week they were a 32-point underdog. This week they're over a 30-point favorite. And Kent, when they go to halftime, they've got to be very pleased with the way they played. Understand the first two games of this season, they have been outscored in the first half 55 to 10. That is huge. We look at Charlie, Charlie Molnar, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. Dean Pease, the head coach for Kent. And if you're Kent right now, what you want to do, if you get a shot to take it, you know, do that, but be careful with the football. Don't give Pittsburgh the ball back in this half. 120 to go. Here's the kick. It's short. Justin Baum. 20, 25 yard line, not bad field position. Brought down by Mark Conco, who does everything. He's on special teams, plays in that backfield. 14 yard return. Let's see what Davis can do. It. Davis has shown good touch on the short ball, the long pass. He's hit one for 33 yards. And look for Davis to use the sideline. Kent only has one remaining timeout, so time is a problem, but be careful with the football. The number one thing they don't want to do, turn the football over and give Pittsburgh another opportunity. They'll start with 1.15 to go from the 25. They'll run it to start things off. Shante Murphy. Nice and tackle from behind there by Brian Knight came in from behind the running back to bring him down. And that play selection tells me one thing. The head coach at Kent, Dean Pease, very happy and very content to go in at halftime, tied 10 to 10. You've lost 15 in a row, and you don't want to do anything foolish right now because that could be emotionally a crusher if you were to give up a touchdown. You've here. lost 15 in a row, and in this span, you've been outscored 553 to 180. Yeah, you like a 10 10 lead, 10 <laughs> 10 tie at halftime. Second down at nine for the 26. This could be one of the uh, great stories of this uh, Saturday afternoon. Matter of fact, for the entire season, Murphy, Murphy breaks one. First down and more. That'll stop the clock as he gets to the 44-yard line. Picks up 18. Shante Murphy having a nice day. He's got nine carries, 35 yards. And now they've put themselves in a position where they can start using a little bit more of their offense. If they take the ball downfield, what it does, it, it makes Pittsburgh drive the ball much further if, in fact, there is a timeout. timeout. Kent State has the last timeout of the half. Jose Davis, we look at the uh, pit sideline. Wouldn't you love to be in the Pittsburgh uh, locker room at halftime? Uh, then again, maybe you would you not. You have to believe <laughs> that Walt Harris, Larry Coyer and company 
They're going to read the riot act at halftime. I think they're going to unload. <laughs> Took a look at Pittsburgh Panthers who are in the National Football League playing their football on Sundays. How about the men who have graduated from Kent currently in the NFL? Not a bad list either. O.J. Santiago, Bob Allen, Steve Zerkersky, Ken Walter, and Eugene Baker. Baker was their top receiver a year ago. And a couple of those gentlemen picked up some uh, NFC Championship rings, played in the Super Bowl last year. We talked about Jack Lambert. How about the human bowling ball, former uh, Kent running back, Don Nottingham. Number 38 for your Baltimore Colts. And a Philadelphia Eagle tackle, Andy Harmon, that I played against a couple of times. They've had some football players in their program. Harmon put in some good years with the Eagles. This is an intriguing situation here for Kent. Got some nice receivers who've done some good things. They spread them two to both sides wide. First and 10 from the Kent 44. 24 seconds to go. Uh-oh. Shante Murphy breaks another one. That's a first down in the pit territory. Now to the 42-yard line. That was ugly. But tell you what, they still got 17 seconds to go. D.J. Dinkins with the stop. And Jose Davis has got to kill the clock right now. And he does. Boy, how about that? A busted play. <laughs> and he rips off a nice gain of 13 yards. And you have to like Jose Davis. He kills the clock, he picks the ball up, and he throws a frozen rope out to the uh, back judge. <laughs> <laughs> Laying loose. Got to like it. Kent's got to get the ball, number one, to the sideline, and you've got to pick up about 20 more yards. You take a shot here, you got 14 seconds left. To... You've got time for two plays. All right. I wouldn't pick on number 31. I'd probably look to the other side of the field. All right. Murphy, the long setback. Both sides. They run straight up the middle. I don't understand that call at all. There's no way of stopping the clock now. Stops it with three seconds ago. I thought for sure it would drop Davis back and have him hang one up there. Well, you're going to certainly see that now. You've still got the sideline. The sideline is your best friend. I don't understand running the ball at all. Me either. Well, right now, you got to hope for some kind of with the old uh, New Orleans Saints, what was it? The uh, Big Ben play, Saints and the Falcons. You see, you throw it down the sideline, tip it up. Maybe somebody comes comes up with the lucky bounce. There will never be another play like the Stanford Band play. <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember that one. Amen. Well, Pitts dropped everybody back, including the Pirate defense. Davis going to look left side. Got a big arm. Throws it up. Let's see what happens. Ball in the air. Oh, oh Sean. <laughs> How about Sean Shoemaker almost got the carom? Not a bad first half for the Kent Golden Flashes. 10-10 ball game here at Pittsburgh and Kent looking to end a losing streak of 15 games. Their last win was against Bowling Green back on November 1st of 97. Time out here at halftime and our halftime festivities and John Sanders coming your way in a couple of minutes. Stay with us in a 10-10 ball game from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh this afternoon, the Golden Flashes and the Panthers are all tied at 10-10. More on that as we continue. But we welcome you right now. I'm John Sanders. This is the National Car Rental Halftime Report. Time to take a look at some other Big East scores, games that are in action. We've updated some of them during the first half. But look at the scoreboard right now. It's Navy trailing Boston College. The Eagles on top 7-3, to three, and Maryland has added three points to its early lead. It is a 10-0 lead over West Virginia, that game play, being played in Maryland. Meantime, there are some very important Big East games that are coming up later this afternoon and tonight. Here's the Big East Wire, brought to you by AT&T. Sophomore quarterback Devin Scott will once again be expected to provide a much-needed spark to an Owls team that has yet to put up any points this season. Temple is 0-2 in 99, but hopes to change all that this afternoon against Akron. Also this afternoon, number 9 Miami hosting number 3 Penn State. Miami has a 6-5 edge in the series all-time. Their last meeting was 1992. Miami's high-octane offense is fueled by running back James Jackson and quarterback Kenny Kelly, who can put up a lot of points in a hurry. To do so this week, they'll have to get past Joe Paterno and his All-American linebacker. Lavar Arrington and Brandon Short. 
In primetime action, the Orangemen of Syracuse host number five, Michigan. Syracuse is 2-0 and for the first time since 1993, but untested. A new cast of characters hope to prove their worth with back-to-back -back wins against the Wolverines. With last year's 10-point win in Ann Arbor, you can bet revenge will be a factor when Michigan comes calling. Those are just two of the big national games, and of course they do involve Big East teams. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later. Right now it is a 10-10 halftime high. There are other big games around the country. Well, let's go, and it is a surprise. That's not a mistake on your screen. It is a 10-10 halftime score. Kent and Pittsburgh locked up at halftime. We played the first 30 minutes of this game. There are some big national games coming up around the country. We get set now for the National Notebook. And But first of all, before we do that, now Sitko will present Do You Know Me? I know everybody in Pittsburgh remembers number 13. He went to high school right down the street at Central Catholic. He went on to become one of the greatest ever in college football and outstanding in the pros as well. Dan Marino owns all of those passing records here at the University of Pittsburgh. And yes, they do know Dan Marino in the city of Pittsburgh. He is a native. His number has been retired. He is in the Pittsburgh Hall of Fame. We are at halftime and his former college team struggling a little bit. It is 10-10 at halftime. National scores now. Let's see what's happening around the country. Nebraska and Southern Miss are just underway. Purdue is leading Central Michigan 34 to 3. Those are some of the top 20 teams that are already in action. There's more to come. Here is the National Notebook with Mike Gleason. Florida wouldn't be a bad place to spend the weekend if you're a college football fan. First, you have top-ranked Florida State hosting number 23, NC State. Not that anyone expects the Wolfpack to win this one. But come to think of it, didn't we say that last year? Good reason for the Knowles to get jacked up. Or how about the defending national champs heading for the Swamp? As far as rankings, that's number two, Tennessee, against number four, Florida. But who needs rankings for this game? You know, my grandmother used to tell me hate is a strong word. She's right. Tennessee and Florida hate each other. I can't think of any other early season conference game that means more. Then moving south to Miami, the Canes ranked number nine this week, entertaining third-ranked Penn State. The Nittany Lions escaped a three-point game with Pittsburgh. A win for Miami would speak volumes as far as their return to national prominence, plus it would give them two Big Ten notches on their belt. On that note, hats off to the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame for playing a tough early season schedule, but now maybe we know why they didn't want to join the Big Ten. After losing to Michigan and then Purdue, they'd be 0-2 in league play. Ooh, they better beat Michigan State today. And before we sign off, we want to admit when we may have been a little off base. After Ohio State's performance against Miami at the kickoff classic, we said John Cooper should start looking at a freshman quarterback. Well, Steve Bellisari may have proven us wrong. Against UCLA, the sophomore southpaw ran, passed, and blocked like someone who should hold down that spot in Columbus for some time. There's no question both his teammates and the fans love this guy. I'm Mike Gleason with this week's National Notebook. And as we continue with the National Car Rental Halftime Report, we're going to dig a little deeper into those games, those big national games involving the Big East schools. It is a 10-10 halftime score here. Those games are coming up later this afternoon. First, take a look at this shot. You won't see it anymore after this year, Pitt Stadium's final season, and this is a surprise. Kent and Pittsburgh locked up 10-10 at halftime. Will there be some more surprises this afternoon or maybe tonight? We're going to find out because we're going to look a little deeper into a couple of Big East games and our look at the Big East today and you look at the University of Miami hosting Penn State. They'll need the legs and the running of James Jackson if they're to handle that tough defense of the Nittany Lions. Same thing for the Orange men. A lot will key on D. Brown as to whether Syracuse can beat Michigan once again. We wind up our halftime by looking more into those games and for that we go upstairs to our experts on Big East football, Dave Sims and Jeff Bostic. Gentlemen. All right, John, thank you very much. You know, the Big East can really make some big noise in the national scene with a couple of their games coming up later on today and this evening. Let's start with the first one, the Penn State-Miami matchup. Well, Penn State-Miami, Miami has to do one thing. They have to stop the running attack, make them one-dimensional, make Penn State throw the football. The second thing they have to do, limit the big play. We saw Penn State's offense against Arizona. They completely took the Wildcats apart. And third, the probably the biggest key, Miami speed. I smell an upset. Miami beating Penn State in Miami. Penn State has not beaten Miami down there 23 years. Wow. 
Hey, here's another game to talk about. Michigan and Syracuse. Last year, Syracuse went to the big house and really did a number on Michigan. So you know Michigan's going to be a little fired up. The revenge in factor will certainly be in the corner of the Michigan Wolverines. Secondly, how does the young quarterback for Syracuse, true freshman Troy Noons, how does he play in his dome, deb dome debut against a big-time school? The other thing, the key to the game, is size more important than speed. Michigan's big. Syracuse is very quick, very shifty side to side. I think size will be a big factor. Michigan will get the win, but it'll be a tight game. Going to be interesting. A Big East with a chance to shine today. Coming up, stats and highlights from our surprising first half here at Pittsburgh. That man, Jose Davis, has his team, Kent, tied with Pittsburgh here at halftime. Big East football from Pittsburgh. 10-10 ball game. A surprise, the Golden Flashes and the Panthers. And let's take a look at our John Hancock first half highlights, Jeff Boston. Starts with number 46, Jason Gavadza. Good job of God. Jose Davis breaks the tackle. The big guy knows his way to the end zone. Puts Ken up 7-0 uh, early in the first quarter. Second quarter, Pitt answers. Missing. One, two, three, four, five missed tackles. Kevin Barlow with an exceptional effort. Once he gets past the linebackers, he goes 61 yards, putting Pittsburgh on the scoreboard at 7-7. Seven to seven. And here's a uh, field goal by Dave Pavich. 37 yards out gave Kent a 10-7 lead in the second quarter. And then another field goal, this one from Pittsburgh's Nick Lutz. This tied the game at 10-10. And in a seven-play, 54-yard drive for the Pittsburgh Panthers that featured Antonio Bryant making three catches for 48 yards from John Terman. What do we look for second half? It'll be interesting to see the temperament of the Pittsburgh football team when they come out. I have to believe Walt Harris, Larry Coyer, their entire coaching staff read the riot act at halftime. This is certainly unexpected. This Kent football squad has not won a game in 15 contests. Pitt comes into this game a 33-point favor. Look for a different attitude and a different mentality the second half. Here's the kick. It's going to Chiffon Allen and through the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. Pittsburgh will put it in play from its own 20. Take a look at the first half stats. And how about Kent? an advantage of four minutes and 42 seconds in time of possession that is shocking given their numbers coming in they were minus almost 17 minutes coming and the into big this game. key dave they've rushed for 111 yards this is the same pittsburgh defense that held penn state last week to 64. that's why they play the game dean Pease, gotta believe he's pretty encouraged with what he's seen so far Mark Moodhart, the fullback, Nick Goings, the tailback for Nick Goings will get the first carry. Finds a seam, but it closes down quickly. Matt Rail, number 22, makes the tackle. Matt made a terrific play on a fourth and short situation for against Pittsburgh back in the second quarter. And when you're a football team that hasn't experienced success as Kent has, the longer you keep a team in the game, the more confidence they build. We talked about it in the first half, how they've been outscored this past 1998 season and, and, and thus far into 99. Confidence is a big part of football. Second down and seven to run left side. He's going, good penetration. He cuts up, though, jumps over the pile, picks up the first down. There was no help as a defensive end turned that play in, Jeff. But then uh, it was a nice lane for Goings to pick up the first down. Good job by their left tackle, Ethan Weidel. And understand one thing, Weidel has been switched from left guard to left tackle due to injury. Mark Brown out with the shoulder. Nick Goings is not the flashy type of guy. He's not the guy that has breakaway speed. He's a sledgehammer, though. Six foot, 215 pounds, and a guy that knows his way to the end zone. Look at Ethan Weidel. 6'6", 300 pounds, senior. Left tackle. Goings again. Sledgehammer indeed. Bounces off two or three guys to the 40-yard line. Finally brought down by Rashad Hall, number four. Good job by their center. Number 60, Jeff McCurley. Six foot five, 290 yard junior. You've always wanted to be a running back, right? This is what you see. You're Nick Goings. He sees the hole open. Good job by his offensive line blocking. It's amazing when you're holding that little leather football, the heat it draws. Sure enough, and another big play as Pitt going to the ground game. Ricky Mendenhall, his first carrier, carry today. 
He's into Kent territory, another first down. We talked about it, Dave. What did we look for in the second half? A different mentality in the Pittsburgh offense. We're physical. We're going to whip you up front. Last week, the Kent defense surrendered 399 yards to Navy. Pittsburgh has not exploited that thus far. Ended all with a 17-yard run. Hit on the first drive here in the second half. This time it's Barlow. So they're going to use running back by committee. Barlow gets down inside the 35. Brought down by Aaron Mayer. And there's nothing fancy about this play selection. This is we're running right, we're running left. It's going to be bone on bone and see who the better man is. Walt Harris, nothing cute here. Teeth rim to the left side. Here's Mendenhall trying to get outside. Stumbles and then swarmed under. A lot of folks there. Jeff Betts, number nine, along with Heath Hommel, number 44. Hommel taking in place with Matt Rail in the middle. And there's been a change for Pittsburgh up front. The freshman Chad Reed is playing center. The ever versatile Jeff McCurley. He started as a freshman as a defensive tackle, played left guard last season, and has been the center bus up. They moved him to right guard. McCurley can play anywhere. Beautiful thing, that versatility. Third down and two at the 35. Barlow, first down. Sideline, knocked out of bounds by McCullough. And this pit drive has been relentless. The Pittsburgh offense has yet to throw the football in the second half. This is mono a mono power football. Barlow able to get around the corner. A touchdown saving tackle by Gary McCullough. They say the numbers do not lie in football, correct? Last week against Navy, they allowed 550 total yards. They've allowed 276 today. Some improvement. Yes, indeed. Barlow adding to his 106. Picks up a solid five before he gets knocked out of bounds. Sean Hall there, number four for Kent. Nice game by Barlow. Gets it to the market just outside the 10 yard line. Six yard gain on that one. And this is one of those drives where Walt Harris is making a statement. Our guys are much more physical than you are, and we're going to prove it. We're not going to try and trick you. We're not going to try and fool you. It's going to be bone on bone, man to man. Buckle it up, big boy. Second down three. Just outside the 10. If they can get to the corner, Barlow cuts it back against the grain and then hammered down pretty good by the free safety, Gary McCullough. He is close to first down yardage. Seven yard line is the mark. And he did pick it up. First and goal for Pitt. Pittsburgh does a good job of holding on to that football. And that's that's a reflection of your coaching. This drive started at the 20. Four minutes and change ago. Good second and third effort by Goings. He lost his balance, but was able to regain and make something out of nothing. And this is the type of drive that is demoralizing for Kent's defense. Like we said, Pittsburgh yet to put the ball in the air. This has been all ground attack. And when you sit there and you look at these big Barlow, you look at uh, Nick Goings, you look at the running backs continue to gain positive yards. It is deflating. You look at the Kent defenders, a lot of hands on their hips right now. Three tight end look, and too many people on the field for Kent. They call it, let's see if they call a timeout. No legal substitution by the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Remains second down. So second down from just outside the one yard line. It's Gary, uh, Greg Colby, the uh, defensive coordinator for Kent. Puzzled and probably a little angry too. Here we go, second down and goal. Just outside the one. Keep it on the ground, going, touchdown Pittsburgh.
Give a lot of the credit on this touchdown drive to the Pittsburgh offensive line. Weidel, Downey, McCurley, Anderson, Hansen. Insert Chad Reed in there also. Very physical up front. That's what allows these running backs going Barlow to gain the yard. This was a physical domination. This was a statement drive. Here's the point after. Big Watts, sophomore from Finlay, Ohio. And it is good. 80 yards. As Pittsburgh opens up the second half a resounding fashion as they pound it home with Nick Goings going in from just outside a yard out. Pittsburgh leads it by the score of 17-10 here in the third quarter over Kent. Pittsburgh offense got it done. That man number 37, Nick Goings, took it in from a yard and a half out, 17 to 10 here in the third quarter. And our e follett Lineman of the Week. And Lineman of the Week is brought to you by e .com. For new and used college textbooks, get out of line with e .com. It's Ryan Gonzalez. 20 tackles last week against Penn State. Got it done. And you heard Walt Harris right there. Now that's having fun. If you're an offensive lineman, that's certainly having fun. Right tackle Ryan Hansen, Ben Kopp. Good job of blocking up front. Pittsburgh's offense did not throw the ball on that entire drive. 11 plays. 11 runs. Yep. Smash mouth football. Nothing subtle, boys and girls. Nothing subtle about that. Lots is kickoff. Going right side, and it goes out of bounds. So Kent will. I simply do not understand that. We're playing on a field that's 54 yards wide. The kicker's going to be on the field how many times? Five, six times a game? Tops. Just, just kick the ball inside the wide lines. Kickoff out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball will be put in play at the 35-yard line. First down. First down. But you, you notice he exits he exits the bench at the end of the field and look who meets him. Yep. Walt Harris. We saw the kicker last week who was last week at West Virginia try to avoid a, a meeting with the coach. But and they say kickers aren't smart. That's it. This is Big East football, everybody. Good to have you with us at Pitt, Pitt Stadium at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders. Surprising game here as the Kent Golden Flashes have more than held their own. Right now they got a Mount a little bit of a comeback. They're down a touchdown. This man, Jose Davis, he plays well. But how about that play by number 22 for Pittsburgh, Kareem Thompson, the senior out of Roanoke, Virginia. Kareem Thompson shows tremendous speed and athleticism. Jose Davis trying to break the edge. Poor job of blocking. Kareem Thompson plays a weak side linebacker. They try and keep him away from the tight end. Six foot, 200 pound senior making a big play. However, on that play, a face mask violation against Pittsburgh. Face mask by the defense. Five yard penalty only from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That'll be first and five from the 40. It wipes out the uh, sack. First down to five. Ball spotted at the 40 yard line. Pittsburgh with two penalties for 10 yards. Kent, one penalty for one yard. That was back in that half the distance to the goal situation. And Roll Davis drops back and throws it. Nobody home. Overthrows Gavadza, the tight end, who was covered by Kareem Thompson. There looked like confusion. Number five, Matt Curry, was trying to run a, a little inside seam four route. Looked like he didn't think he was a primary receiver, and he quit running the pattern. And Jose Davis is back in the pocket holding the football and does what a senior will do. Throw the ball out of bounds. Don't try and force anything. Live for another play. Exactly. And this isn't a bad situation. Second and five, it's your own quarter. Situation where they're going with four wide receivers. Look for them to run the football. That they did a lot in the first half. Swing it outside. Shoemaker got room, got the first down. It's about the 47 yard line. Where he's brought down by Ramon Walker, the free safety for Pittsburgh, number 25. Other scores still holding fast to those numbers. Boston College at Navy 7 3. 
Maryland shutting out West Virginia down at College Park. Nebraska leading Southern Miss. That's early. Number six Cornhuskers. That's personnel changes during the week. Purdue in a ha-ha over Central Michigan. First and ten for Kent. Dante Murphy on oh, a good stick. Good stick on that play by Mike White, who's played a heck of a game, the walk-on after transferring from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And Mike White shows some quickness for a big guy. It looked like there was an opening for just a second. All of a sudden, it slammed shut. And you can slam the door shut when you're 280 pounds. It helps. Look at the number of people in the tackle box. Mike White sheds the block right there. Good job of stacking. You know, that's the one thing with tackling. Take the guy back the other direction. Pitt with nine men. Up eight in the box. Davis under pressure finds Gavazza. They try to take it away from him. But the possession holds. First down, Kent. Davis got hit and hurt on the left arm. See if he can gut it out as backup is Zach Williams, a junior from Lisbon, Ohio. It looks like he hit his hand on the helmet of the Pittsburgh defender. And Gavadza has shown the ability to get open. See right there? I'm not sure if he hit his hand on the helmet or if he caught it on the ground. Watch his right hand. May have caught just the top of the Pittsburgh defender's helmet. What a good job of concentration. Good job by their big tight end. I'm very impressed with their personnel up front. Gavazza, six catches, 80 yards. Shante Murphy into the secondary. 15, 10, and he's run out of bounds. It'll be a first down for Kent. They found a hole on that left defensive side. Ramon Walker finally rode him out of bounds, but a quick hitter for Shante Murphy. Shante Murphy's listed as the second tailback. DeMarlo Rozier is the starter. This guy's been very impressive. He's got that fifth gear that he can go to, and he's got breakaway speed. You know what he reminds me of? He's long and lean. He reminds me of a great number 26, Preston Pearson, who played for the Cowboys and the Steelers. Boy, you are dating yourself. I know it, but I, he might raise the same number. I remember him. watching him play also. <laughs> yeah, when you were a wee one, right? Can't threatening. They're in the red zone. Jonte swarmed under this time. Didn't have much of a chance to get any momentum. Ryan Gonzalez with the tackle. I tell you what, they paid a lot of attention to him. That may be made his third tackle all day. You have to like Kent's offensive schemes. In and out of personnel, three wide receiver, four wide receiver, two tight end set, one running back. And what that does, it makes the defense prepare for a lot of different packages. Pittsburgh has not done that very well this afternoon. No, sir. Second down, 12 from the 14. Play action. Davis under pressure. Throws back across his body. And I tell you what, it's a good thing he did short that. He was looking for Gavadza in the back end of the end zone. He was double covered. And he's still favoring his right hand. You can tell that his right hand is bothering. Discretion is the better part of valor. And he showed that on that last play. The one thing that helps you down here, Dave, when you get inside the red area, the field is condensed. Mm -hmm. There's not as much room for the receivers and their tight ends and their running backs. This is what you do if you're an offensive coordinator, folks. Charlie, Mol Charlie Molnar to the right of your screen, trying to call the play. Got and understand on the shot on the uh, game clock. They'll get this off. Third down, 12. This is a biggie. Out of the gun, double wides both sides. And there's the play clock down to zero. Did he get a timeout call? I don't believe he did. <laughs> Dead ball, delay a game, offense, five yard penalty, remains third down. And the five yard penalty may be a blessing. It gives him more space to operate Amen. in. Here, here. I don't think they'll pop an artery on that one. You know, we're talking about coming into this game, time of possession, pretty much even. And, and the Pittsburgh offense was not exactly stellar at holding the football either. Coming into this game, Pittsburgh's offense held the ball for an average of 25 minutes and 32 seconds. This is going to be an interesting formation. That it is. My goodness. They've got Three players the spread all over the field. Looks like back on the street in the neighborhood. 
Third down and 16 from the Pittsburgh 18. Pittsburgh shows blitz. They bring it. Quarterback draw. Good call, but it's snuffed out. As Davis got to the 16-yard line, Julian Graham, number 45, with the play for Pittsburgh. Good to see number 45, Julian Graham, back in the lineup after hurting his knee. The first, I like this call. The quarterback draw. You see Graham dropping in the zone, little zone blitz. Fights off the block of number 72, good speed. Kent will have to settle for a field goal attempt. 33 yards on the attempt for Dave Pavich. Good snap the kick, low liner. And he got it in. So Kent with another impressive drive. They don't get a touchdown, but they put points on the board. They make it a 17-13 game here. Pittsburgh leading with 6.53 to go, third period. You'd never know by watching them today that Kent's lost 15 in a row. 17-13 ball game. Pittsburgh leading. Kent just had a pretty impressive drive. Eight plays, 49 yards, a 33-yard field goal by Pavich. 3.47 off the clock. Pavich to kick off. Hank Boteet and Chiffon Allen. Allen will take it at the 5. 10, 15. At a hole, 20, 25. 30 sideline pushed out of bounds by McCullough. Good return to the 34 yard line. Here in McCullough. So Jeff, if you're pit, you go back to the sledgehammer attack, just keep it on the ground like they did the last time, the first time out here in the uh, third quarter? If it's not broke, don't fix it. This is an offensive lineman's dream right here. Your, your football coach and offensive coordinator, Walt Harris, willing to run the football. Use your big guys up front and muscle them. Let's see what they do here. They start from the 34-yard line. Determined. Barlow trying to get to the outside. Nothing doing there. A couple of good plays there. Roy Atia was one of them, and Mark Strickland the other, number 55. And when you look at Kent coming into this game, the one stat that stood out to me, number 51, Roy Atia, a freshman defensive lineman, six foot two, 300 pounds. This Kent defense was giving up 314 yards a game. This young man had only registered two tackles. You would think he would fall on more than two or three tackles. Barlow's got a career high, 118 yards rushing for Pittsburgh. Making a nine at the 35. Up the middle, boy, look at the effort. Barlow has got some leg drive, doesn't he? Brandon Bridges makes the tackle, but I tell you what, that's a product of a lot of leg, leg uh, uh, work in terms of squats and presses. And I went into the uh, Pittsburgh uh, Strength Training Center yesterday. Very impressive, and I'll tell you what, Dan Marino and a longtime NFL veteran, Jim Sweeney, have donated a lot of money to the Pittsburgh uh, uh, strength training program. Uh, a lot of Nautilus machines, hammer strength equipment. Very impressive facility. I like it. Third down and four to 39 for Pittsburgh. Dermott's going to throw it. First one, second half. Over the middle, receiver fell down, or was he knocked down? They say he was, he fell down. Tried to get it to Kenny Kenshin. So a three and out for Pittsburgh. Boy, if you're a Kent, you are loving this. It may be me, but it looks to me as Terman is a little bit tentative cutting the ball loose. It almost as if he's guiding the football. No question. And Walt Harris with his hands on his hips. Body language pretty much says it all. Pretty good kick. Shoemaker, fair catch, 17-yard line. The timeout on the field with 5-10 to go. After uh, the Pittsburgh Panthers go three and out, a 44-yard punt by Greg DeBolt. Kent trailing by four. Hey, Mark, thanks to you now, everything's dot com. You know, beachballs.com, arugulasalad.com. I mean, dot com on. Oh, here we go again. Hey, dot com, Padre. We both like Miller Lite for the same reason. It tastes great, undot commonly so. You know I like it because it's so smooth. Ooh, I guess we're in dot compatible, right? Huh? Not if you lose the lane, dot comedy. Hey, that's a good dot com bat. <laughs> Miller Lite, taste a true Pilsner. Dot com here often? 
One toll-free call gives you an accurate updated forecast for free. I've been everywhere, man. Across the deserts, bear, man. I breathe the mountain air, man. I've traveled, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Reno, Chicago, Fargo, Minnesota, Buffalo, Toronto, Winslow, Sarasota, Wichita, Tulsa, Ottawa, Oklahoma, Tampa, Panama, Madawa, La Paloma, Pebble, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. Sit, go. You know me. It's time for the West Liberty State College Alumni Bowl 4. Don't miss the action of the fun as West Liberty takes on Walsh University. Saturday, September the 18th at Wheeling Island Stadium. And make a day of it at the tailgate party in the Wheeling Downs parking lot. The West Liberty State College Alumni Bowl 4, September the 18th at 7, with replay following 7 News at 11 on WTRF 7. Brought to you by West Liberty State College. Welcome back, everybody, to Pittsburgh ESPN Plus. Presentation of Big East football. It's Pittsburgh leading Kent by the score of 17-13, third quarter here. A very interesting game. Kent with the ball, first and 10 from its own 18-yard line. And they run Shante Murphy up the middle. Murphy's a good game. Nothing on that particular game, on that uh, run there. Your Purifoy went to stop number 19. Two yards on the game, second down and eight. Let's see what Davis does on this second down play. Throw outside, a little bit too much on it for Shoemaker. Kent very much in this game, and this is what a win would mean, Jeff, for the Golden Flashes. This is just a few of them. At end of 15-game losing streak, first non-conference win since September 14th of 96, first non-conference win of Division 1A since 9-10-88. And the bigger thing, it would take a big monkey off of his back. Oh, yes, it would. Dean P is looking for his first win, his own 13 tenure at Kent. Davis with time. Sideline ball. Receiver stopped. And that was Joshua Bostic. He caught a 33-yard pass back in the second quarter. So a three and out for Kent. And you see the coach talking to Bostic, saying, you know what, you need separation. Hank Poteet's an All-American cornerback, simply unable to get separation. Your quarterback sitting back there with the football, and that clock's running the whole time. Good job by his offensive line with protection, but nobody to throw to him. Jim Less into punt. Hank Poteet standing back at the Pittsburgh 41. <laughs> Very funky-looking snap. Poteet driven back. Uh-oh, Boston. Regains, and boy, I tell you what, could have been a difficult moment. Matt Curry on the coverage for Kent. That was an ugly snap. I don't think I've ever seen that much wobble in a snap on a punt. And you see Poteet, and look, look at the shadow. Look at the shadow. Yeah, he whiffed The sun is directly in his eyes. Good That's job of recovering the ball. That was an ugly snap. Yes, it was. 43 yards in the punt. That was though. an ugly punt. Though. You know, that, thing, that thing looked like a field goal. Got the job done. Pitt's going to start at its own 32. See if Terman can come up with here. He's been very spotty today. Keep it on the ground. Goings cuts it back inside. Punished there by a couple of tacklers. Number 37, Nick Roy Atia among them, number 51, with Matt Rail, number 22, providing assistance. Not good. Jason to make that James Harrison, the injured player. Harrison. Looks like he had the wind knocked out of him. He's moving too many body parts to have something seriously wrong. It's always that one spot down there. If it, you get a ding right there, it'll... And anybody that's Ooh. ever been on the field like this knows exactly what this young man's going Ooh, through. Yeah. Where is the air? There's, somebody told me there was some air around here, wasn't there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> man, you want to get it back quickly. Hey, next week, got a good one for you. Back into the conference, it'll be Boston College and Rutgers. 
a noon start check your local listing. Chris Hovan, the outstanding nose tackle for the BC Eagles, and Mike McMahon. A lot expected from him this year. Rutgers with a great turnaround year last year at five and six, and they hope to really do a good job building on that this year, although they are off to an 0-2 start. BC and Rutgers next Saturday here in ESPN+. Plus. And Mr. McMahon is from Pittsburgh, right? Yes, sir. Pittsburgh hometown. So many quarterbacks have come out of Pittsburgh. Let's go down to the sidelines and update from John Sanders. And while they take care of the injured player, we want to tell you about some football bloodlines here. That's Brennan Carroll. He's the son of New England Patriots coach Pete Carroll. When he got out of high school, he was offered a scholarship at Pitt, turned it down because he and a bunch of his buddies wanted to go to Delaware. The Blue Hens, a top one, Division I AA school. But he didn't play his first year, so he thought about going to BC. His dad gave a call to Walt Harris. He came, visited Pitt, came here, sat out last year. He's now a redshirt sophomore tight end. The bloodlines continue for football players and their dad. Right you are, John. Good point. Good story. How big a win was it for his dad last Sunday? Humongous. And I feel sorry for the uh, New York Jets fans because of the injury to uh, Vinny Testaverde. Boy, I tell you what, it's a, all but had a funeral last week in New York. Oh, man, there was a mourning on Monday. <laughs> Unbelievable. Second down and six at the 36. I know you folks up in the Boston area are smiling big time right now. They run Mendenhall. Second effort gets him about a yard. How good is it to have football back on the air? Thank you, sir. I mean, <laughs> I like baseball, and I, I certainly like basketball, but give me something where we can get down and get dirty. You know, they say, well, basketball is a contact sport. Football is a collision sport, ladies and gentlemen. There is a difference. In a third down situation here. I think they're going to have to pass the ball again. Yep, and Terman's confidence is at <laughs> ground certainly. zero. At microscopic levels right now. Blitz, they pick it up. Terman, step, throw, and whoa. Total miscue there. He threw on out. The receiver ran and in. Another three and out for Pittsburgh, the second straight. Boy, this offense has just crumbled. And you see Walt Harris. He's bringing the quarterback and the wide receiver together. I like that move. And see, Latif Grimm is up. He's looking at the uh, Diamond Vision screen. He's trying to explain what he did. You're never going to win. The coach will always be right. The track. They go after the punter, and a gorgeous punt by Greg DeVolt. And he gets it out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Wonderful punt by Greg DeVolt. That punt covers 52 yards, make it 53 yards as BC continues to lead Navy, 7-3, third period. Maryland still shutting out West Virginia. Nebraska on the short end to Southern Miss. That's out in Lincoln. Purdue probably down to its fourth string now against Central Michigan in a blowout. Other scores, we'll bring them to you a little bit later. A lot of concern on that sideline. There's Walt Harris on the bottom. Kent, 17-13 trailing as they begin this drive at their own nine yard line. Chante Murphy, a workhorse today. You have to like the zeal that this Kent offense comes to the plate with. Ready to play, prepared, multi uh, formation, in and out of personnel packages. The big key though is number six, believe me. He's the real deal. his touchdown pass today. 44 career passes. Two deep passes for his man Davis. Bad throw that time to his tight end. His trusty receiver Jason Gavadza who was open but it was a bad throw. It's tough enough to catch the football but if you're at this stadium looking into that sun that spells double trouble. The other thing too on that sideline he was double covered. Ball tips up in the air. They run that tip drill and could go against it. Look at the sky conditions here at Pittsburgh. What a beautiful afternoon for football. Spectacular, no question about it. Final year, Pitt Stadium. Third down, six. Crowd looking for a good defensive stop here. They run the screen. Snipped out. This ball, luckily for Kent, it went out of bounds. What a blow laid on Shante Murphy. Demetrius Rich. He had about a five, six yard running start. And Murphy, it's amazing he's up to talk about it. This was a big time hit by number eight, Demetrius Rich. 
Shante Murphy leaving the field. He didn't want to act as if he were hurt. This is like a, a this is like a missile right here. Bam! Five foot ten, 170 pound red shirt freshman. Big hit. Good job. Incomplete pass here. Certainly, uh, Tim Stein deep to receive on this punt. Jim Les. Got a high hanger. Stein calls for a fair catch. Makes it at the 44 yard line. Pitt's going to have outstanding field position. 31 yards on the punt. Pitt will begin play at the Kent 45. Number 95, Morgan Cotter is a senior long snapper for this Kent squad. Those were two of the ugliest snaps I've ever watched. Had a bad day. Had a bad day. The Jeff, uh, Jeff Bostic tutorial program is Maybe available. Maybe what I'll do, I've got a video. I've got a video out that we can <laughs> teach you how to do this. 1-800-PUNT. Terman blitz backside, got rid of it quickly. And he gets his tight end, slogging ahead. That's McMullen. Check that, that was Chris Viola. Viola, the fullback, came out to make that stop. Sean Hall with the stop. Good to see him back in the lineup. Remember in the first half, he got his ankle rolled up. Obviously, it's not bothering now. You know what, walk on for his first four seasons here. Was awarded a scholarship this fall. I bet that makes his parents happy. Pretty good game of eight yards. Second down, two from the 37. Barlow looking for room, got the first down. Got it down to the 32-yard line. Tackle by Brad Hartman. It looks like with Terman's confidence low, going to go back to what Pittsburgh established in their first drive here in the second half. Keep it on the ground and keep it simple. Kent shows blitz. It's picked up. Terman throws behind his receiver and almost picked off. Abdur Khan, number 24, the freshman from Beltsville, Maryland, had the better angle on that than the pit receiver. Good job by the Panthers picking up the blitz. Number 38, Fiola, good job of picking up that blitzing linebacker. Short arm to Jeff. You see that? He's not cutting the ball loose and it was fortunate the ball was not intercepted. Just like you talked about earlier, he's not striding into the ball, not stepping and throwing. There's no zip on the football. Need one here. Second down and 10. 32. Good place for a draw play right here. Out of the shotgun. Good call. The draw, and guess what? They're thinking along with you. Defensive coordinator Greg Colby for Kent and his players in the right position. Tackled by Richard Bender, number 92. Now you've got a decision. You've got a quarterback whose confidence is obviously shaken. Do we try and run the ball? Are we in two down territory? Do we try and take two plays and gain five yards? Or do we try and put our quarterback back in the pocket and let him cut the ball loose? They're going from the two tight ends. They run it with the fullback. Viola moves the pile, but he's going to be short for the first down. Keith Hommel, number 44, tackle for Kent. Final seconds here in the third quarter. And a game much closer than anybody in the country expected through three quarters. Pittsburgh with the lead, they are in the red zone, and they would love to tack on a touchdown here. See what they do when we come back to start the fourth quarter. It's the Panthers 17-13 over 10. Fans here at Pitt Stadium in its final year. 17-13 in a surprise, Pittsburgh holding off Kent. Girl Scout Troop 688. There you go. This is Big East Football. Glad to have you with us from Pitt Stadium. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders. And right now, big situation for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Fourth down and two at the Kent 25, and they are going to go for it. And this is a long two yards. Here we go, Fiola, the lone setback. 
Julius Dixon slot in the left side from behind. Turman got it. First down and more down inside the 15 yard line to Latif Grimm. McCullough covering for Kent. Latif needs to just go on to play football. He's looking dialogue. He can dialogue later. 17 13. Boy, it's a lot of dialoguing going on when you were playing, too. I know it happens. That's the best part of football. You can hear what goes on in the trenches. <laughs> then again, uh, we, we're going to keep the family and the wife and all the children out of this thing, though. Pittsburgh with the first down at the 14 yard line. This drive started at the Kent 45. Barlow cuts inside. Got to say one thing about these pit runners today. Their balance has been outstanding. You hit the first contact. They've run really well through that first contact. Rushing yards today for Pittsburgh, pretty resounding, 227. But one stat that coming in today, Jeff, look at the time of possession, pretty much a wash. And, you know, you look at the scoreboard, 17-13 Pittsburgh. You look at these stats, the only thing that's really out of kilter is just like we've got highlighted, the rushing yards. And most of this was done in the third quarter. Viola straight up the middle. Bangs his way down to the five. They try to strip the ball away from him. Ryan Altizer, 56, was there for Kent. You know, we've talked so much this afternoon about the quarterback for the uh, Pittsburgh offense. Listen to some of the people that Walt Harris has coached. Boomer Esaias and Bobby Hoying, Pete Gonzalez, Jeff Blake, Tony East and Trudeau, Glenn Foley, Greg Wheelahan, Dave Wilson, Matt Lyman, Joe Germain at Ohio State. And a very effective offensive quarterback coach. Straight up the middle, Fiola, touchdown, Pittsburgh. A quick hitter with the fullback, the senior from North Hills High School here in Pittsburgh. And the Panthers open up to a 10-point lead. Chris Fiola is much like this city. Blue collar, tough, and resilient. The fifth-year senior, as I mentioned earlier, was given a athletic scholarship this fall after four years as a walk-on. You like to see these type of stories and these type of kids succeed. Nick Lotz for the point after. Piece of cake for Nick. And the Panthers lead it 24 to 13. And they pretty much kept it on the ground on that 55-yard drive. Kept off by Fiola's five-yard run. Panthers lead at 24-13 over Kent early on here in the fourth quarter as we look at Viola's determination to get into pay dirt, and he does. Pittsburgh by 11. Chris Viola just scored the touchdown, open up this Pittsburgh lead for Viola. His first touchdown of the season. Starts with his offensive line, Chad Reed in there at center. Good job. McCurley moved to right guard. Boy, Ryan Hansen moved some folks too, didn't he? Number 76. That's one of those Don Nottingham type of runs, right? Yes, indeed. Nine plays, 44 yards. And you see that bandage on his chin? That's what makes him a football player. You know his chin's busted open? He doesn't care. He likes it. <laughs> He'd probably like to have some blood on him somewhere. Look good. Get that photo taken. Show the kids down the road. Yeah, you, I, I found it amazing. The older you get, the longer and the taller these tails become. You ain't lying. <laughs> Here's lots. With the kick, Shoemaker at the six. Oh, what a collision. At the 20-yard line, Shoemaker got laid out. D.J. Dinkins, number one, got him, You're looking along at the, with Ramon Walker. You're looking at the Kent coach's booth. Charlie Molner, the offensive coordinator to your right. He has to dig into his bag of tricks. I go back to my senior quarterback, Jose Davis. Let's not worry about the run. We're 11 points down right now. We have to try and stretch the field. You're going to have your hands full because of number 31, Hank Boteet. Exceptional cornerback. There's Davis. And come right out, ready for action. Shoemaker in the backfield with Shante Murphy. They're going to throw him. Time over the middle. Got a man there. Shoemaker makes the catch. It's a first down. Up to the 43-yard line. Nice pickup of 22 yards. Kareem Thompson. What a pretty tackle. throw by Jose Davis. Tight spiral. You're standing back in the pocket. Good job by his offensive line. 
Shoemaker makes a grab amongst four defenders. Good job of concentration, watching the ball into your hands. Got to like that uh, Shoemaker on that play. Went up and got it. Murphy, the deep back now. He's, he's got 81 yards on 25 carries. On for more. Coming into today, Murphy career at 81 yards, 25 carries in 11 games. And today, his productivity pretty good. 17 carries. And he's got uh, 83 yards. Yeah, very impressive. Mr. Murphy's found the rushing a little bit difficult between those tackles, though. Mm -hmm. Much better job outside on the edge. Sean, a sophomore from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Second down and eight at the 46. Back to throw. Davis got time and misses his receiver, Joshua Bostic. Bostic had a nice 33 yarder earlier. Good coverage by the sophomore linebacker, Amir Pirafoy. You know, it's amazing. The receivers always get up complaining about being held. <laughs> Yet when they push off, they never say a word, right? See Michael Irvin. Yeah, Michael Irvin. Example, Michael Irvin. There should be a picture. If push off is in the Webster Dic Webster's uh, dictionary, there should be a picture of Michael Irvin very close to it. He does it well. 12-13 to go in the ballgame. Third down and eight at the 46. Knock down. Hey, there's a big play. Big play by Seth Hornack. Oh, that may have saved some big damage. Fake the run, throw a quick screen out the right side, and Hornack knocked it down. Larry Corrier is bringing the blitz. Davis catches the ball, loads the arm, and throws it. Hornack bats the ball down. They had this little underneath screen set up pretty well. You could see the offensive lineman going out to the flat. Probably prevented a big play. Seth, a 5'11 senior from Lower Burl, PA. And he's been slowed by a calf injury. There's a punt by Jim Less. Stein is deep. Oh, he got a beauty. High sailor drives Stein back to the five. He should have let it go. Indeed, finds some room. Stein tripped up at the 19 by Justin Gatton. Good-looking punt by Jim Less. A gutsy return by Tim Stein. Back in a moment. Pittsburgh by 11. The Wheeling Suspension Bridge. Celebrating 150 years with Bridge Glass 99. Sponsored by the Health Plan. With support from Pepsi and Kroger. The National Road was built to allow westward expansion. The Ohio River rose as a natural obstacle blocking that expansion. This obstacle slowed the expansion for 30 years. The solution would be an engineering masterpiece for the time, a bridge, a suspension bridge, spanning a gap over 1,000 feet across. In November 1849, the Wheeling Suspension Bridge opened, allowing settlers and products to head west, and that expansion led to new markets for Wheeling's products. The new bridge created growth west and here in Wheeling. For 150 years, the bridge has stood as silent witness to the growth in Wheeling. The bridge has endured many attempts to bring it down over the last century and a half. Some of the most memorable have been the floods on the mighty river it tamed. The Wheeling Suspension Bridge, celebrating 150 years with Bridge Blast 99. Sponsored by the Health Plan with support from Pepsi and Kroger. Welcome back, everybody. Pittsburgh leading 24 to 13. Just under 12 minutes to play. Let's look at our Purolator game summary. And the number that sticks out, Dave, Pittsburgh, 241 yards on the ground. A majority of that in the third quarter. You have to be impressed with the way Kent has battled. Coming into this game, they were allowing 314 yards on the ground a game. Barlow with a big afternoon. They come the Pitt Panthers from their own 19. They want to run a lot of clock here. Keep it on the ground. Goings got hit hard. As he tried to turn the corner left side. Now, if you're Kent, you have to start taking some, some risk and gambling a little bit on defense. Eight, nine people in the box, keeping your cornerbacks man to man and, and kind of hanging them out to dry. Unfortunately, their defense has a redshirt freshman and a true freshman at corner. Good for Sean Hall and Jeff Betts shutting down Pittsburgh on that play. No gain. Oh, Roy Atia. Just got to look at him. Number 51. Second down and 10 is going to reset. 
Herman. Quick screen outside. Dixon. Backed out of bounds by James Harrison. Good to see Mr. Harrison back in the game after uh, probably getting the wind knocked out of him last series. Sure enough. It's amazing how resilient youth is, right? Three yards on the pickup. First catch of the day for Dixon. Terman going out of the gun on this third and five from the 24. Looking off to a second and third receivers. Hangs it high. Got a man there under throw. Knocked out. Intercepted. Penalty flag on the play as well. Picked off by Nashville Dyer. That ball was woefully underthrown. This was Billy Kilmer in all his glory. Terman throwing into a little bit of a breeze, not a big one. I think what we're going to get is an, an interference call against the uh, Kent defense. There's a break for Pittsburgh. That was an ugly thrown football. Well, I think one of the things they're going to look at on the game tape from a pit standpoint is Terman's uh, mechanics. You talk about stepping and throwing, it's not happening. Very fortunate that this ball was not intercepted. I'm not sure the ball wasn't deflected first. And I think yeah, it was. Yeah, somebody got a piece. Boy, the uh, coaching staff for Kent is irate. They're out on the field. Dean Pease just pulled back by. There's Dean right there with the hat off, the cap off. And, and I think I can read his lips that the ball was deflected. Yep. And I think he's, I think he's got a good point there. If you haven't won a football game in 13 tries, you will plead. You've got a little bit of emotion, right? Yep. And you will plead your case hard. There is no penalty. The ball was tipped. Jeff, good call on your part. And Dean Pease, his plea works. It was convincing. Here we go. My wife tells me it never pays to complain. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> if you complain long enough, you get some. Watch this ball deflected. Right there. 80 no. got it. Bryant. Number. Bryant tipped it. Once it's tipped by a defender or a receiver, it's anybody's ball. There it is right there, plain as day. I'll tell you what, both of those young men show a, uh, a, a propensity at, at high jumping. These guys were off the ground about 30 inches. And Hallen, the new basketball coach, may want to consider Mr. Bryant coming out for the ball club. But the more important things, 10.31 to go. 24-13, Pittsburgh leading and a break for Kent. They take over at their own 40. Nashville Dyer with the interception. Here's Davis. Deep ball. Got a man down there. Deep ball. No, sir. Try to get it to Jerron Kelly. First time we've seen him today. That's interesting that Jerron Kelly is in the lineup. We haven't seen him for the first three quarters of the game. He missed the Navy game due to a shoulder injury. He showed you some jets. He caught a shot under the chin right there, too. Good throw by uh, Davis. I have been awfully impressed with this young man's poise in the pocket. He has been impressed, no doubt about it. Here's Kelly, six-foot sophomore from Pemberton, New Jersey. Screen left side, Shoemaker with blockers, but a great play. Terrific play. It's broken up by Demetrius Rich, number eight. Very little gain, and Navy and BC, not the score thought it had last year when Navy won 32-31 at BC, but wow, look at this. West Virginia being shut out at Maryland. Maryland trying to end a three-game losing streak to the Mountaineers. Nebraska, not by much over Southern Miss. And Purdue, that game has been over for a long time. If you're Kent, you're in two-down territory, Dave. Why not? Nine minutes and 40 seconds and counting to go in the game. You're down by 11. You've got to score. Third and five. The 45. Kelly in motion. Davis. Pure five. Flushes him. Doesn't bring him down. Gets rid of it. Gavazza is down for the catch. First down. What a big play. Jose Davis to Jason Gavazza. First down. Kent. The one thing about football that is always true. Big-time players make big plays. 
Jason Davis running for his life and really the first time that the uh, pocket has collapsed on Kent this afternoon. Davis shows some athleticism, losing his balance right there. Throws to his favorite receiver, number 46, Gavadza. I tell you what, you've got to be impressed with this young, man, young man's ability to get open and run after the catch. And Davis never, ever quit on that play. In pit territory now. Jonte Murphy. Didn't run with a lot of resolve that time. Didn't have a lot of people there. Kareem Thompson. With the stop for Pittsburgh. Bach running, approaching the nine-minute mark. Jose Davis has showed us some things today. Terrific athleticism. Good arm. Dean Pease tries to guide his team to its first victory. I would look for November first of '97. Look for Kent to come back to that little underneath, little quick throw, and they, they get the receivers and linemen out there to kick out. Seems to be a very successful play for him. Look, yep, there they come. Two watch, watch this underneath throw. Third down, second down, nine at the 40. Davis throws off the back foot. Gavats is there, couldn't run it down. D.J. Dinkins is playing center field back there, covering. Boy, when in doubt, Davis will look for Gavatsa. Somebody did not run the proper pattern. He's talking to uh, Jerron Kelly. Here's D.J. Davis having a conversation with number three, Jerron Kelly. He just got finished with a conversation with number 55, 55, Ryan Gonzalez. Gonzalez on a blitz. Put Davis on the ground after he cut loose of the football. Third down, nine from the 40. Clock at 8.34 to go in an 11-point Pittsburgh lead. Shoemaker in the slot. He's got six catches for 47 yards. That's what Kent has done on third down today. Sprint out left side. Stop. Throw. Looking. No. It's overthrow. Shoemaker. And not a good throw that time by Jose Davis. Shoemaker was double covered. You got to go for it. You got to go for it on fourth down. Sure enough, 829 to go. Showed the intensity of Davis. Think he doesn't want this game badly? And they're going to send in the punt team. Well, I'm surprised. I agree with you. You're 0 for your last 15. Take a chance, D. That's, down, why, that's why we're up here, though. You bet. See if they have a fake in their repertoire. Less. And a fair catch by Stein at the 10 yard line. Got a timeout on the field after that 30 yard punt. 24 13 Panthers over Kent. And an 11 point lead here in the fourth quarter, 8.24 to go. Let's take a look at our best play of the game brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people, and it's Kevin Barlow. Terrific effort on this touchdown run to tie the game at seven back in the second quarter. It covered 61 yards. Okay. He's trying to explain this to all his teammates. You know, this is really not the blocking. It was really me. <laughs> yeah. Panthers could use a long drive here. They'd like to keep it on the ground. Here comes the blitz. Going down the lane into the secondary. Kept his balance. Great run to the 28-yard line. 18-yard pickup. Nick Goings racking up some yardage today. Sean Armstead makes the tackle. Latif Grimm still jawing out there instead of playing football. You can understand why Nick Goings was the Ohio Player of the Year in high school. Not a flashy guy. Transferred from Ohio State, set out last year. Big time running back game, 2,600 yards this senior year, 38 touchdowns. Officially 19 on that carry. They're around the big fullback. That's a fullback run, isn't it? Mark Moodhart. Kent believes they took it right away from him. But you know what? The only people that are believing that are the people in the white uniforms, not the black and white striped uniforms. The officials <laughs> are putting the ball down and saying, you know, it's second down. James Harrison went in and he ripped off Moodhart. Not official. Ball at the 36. Seven yard gain on that play. Clock running. Coming up on the seven minute mark. 
the ground game has been pretty much the story for Pittsburgh going some tough yardage. Looks like he's close to first down yardage. Brought down by Rashad Hall, number four. Panthers started this drive more than a, almost a minute and a half ago back at their own 10-yard line, and they've used the ground game to get it just shy of the 40. And Kent has been a worthy opponent this afternoon, and regardless to what happens on the final outcome, uh, their coach, Dean Pease, cannot be upset with the way his team has competed this afternoon. They made some significant progress today. That's a first down by a couple of inches for Nick Goings. Goings has had a good day today, running hard for Walt Harris and the Panthers. And you talk about... You talk about... Uh, the futility of wins here at Kent since 1987 was their last winning season. Since then, they've been 18, 104, and 1. That hurts. Going 16 carries, 93 yards. Move hard. Check that. Mendenhall. Six, six foot 230 from Morrisville, Pennsylvania. James Harrison brings him down, number 58 for Kent. Kent did have a good run back in the uh, 70s, early 70s, 72, 3, and 4 under Don James, who went on to University of Washington. During that stretch, Don James led Kent to a 22, 11, and 1 record. And they've had some coaching. You remember Dick Crum, the coach at the University of North Carolina. He was at Kent. That's people over the years, but it's been a tough run of recent notes. Goings. Very precise runner, does a good job finding the holes. Across the 50, that's another first down for Pittsburgh. And we've got a yellow flag on the field. You know, there have not been a lot of penalties today. It's gonna to be against Pittsburgh. Walt Harris and Terman, and I tell you what, right now Walt's gonna keep it pretty simple for his quarterback. Holding by the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. You know, we've talked a lot about the running backs, the Barlows, the goings. The one thing we ought to talk about, when you're gaining yardage on the ground, look at your offensive line. It's really hard to tell which one of the offensive linemen, I'm not sure any offensive linemen have ever really held. Oh, stop. 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 <laughs> I mean, if it's not a mugging, it's not holding, right? Second and 14 at the 35. Terman going to throw. Steps into this one. Got a man down there. Overthrows Julius Dixon. That time, the mechanics are pretty good. Stepped into that throw and cut it loose. That ball actually looked like it had a little bit of zip on it. Nice tight spiral. That's the one thing about college football. How can a team play as tough as they did last week uh, in a very hostile environment against Penn State and really on the fringe for, for two and a half quarters this afternoon. It is remarkable. I told Coach Harris yesterday, I said, Coach, it's got to be tough to have your profession in the hands of 18, 19, and 20-year-olds. <laughs> Surprisingly. There was a million ways he could have answered you, I'll tell you that. Third down and 14, here's Terman again. Got the great protection. Steps, throw, that ball's tipped up in the air. Uh-oh, here we go, interception. And that is Abdur Khan fighting his way, keeping the play alive, and down he goes finally at the 45-yard line of Pittsburgh. The tip made by Curtis Witherspoon, a backup linebacker, number 59. 5.26 to go. And this interception breathes life back into the offense of Kent. Terman back in the pocket, plenty of time to throw the football. Nothing happens good when the ball is tipped. Number 24, Khan, is the guy on the spot, the young freshman. You know what, he thinks he's a running back. Right there, he breaks a tackle of uh, Goings. Gives his offense an opportunity with great field position. Let's see if they go for the quick strike. 5.26 to go, down 11. Jose Davis. Played a strong game. They're going to run it with Shantae Murphy. Break it to the sideline. Looking for a block. He's got first down down to the 21-yard line. Nice pickup. 
23 yards on the gain. Kareem Thompson prevents further damage, but a good looking run. That trap plays worked real well today. It's been either feast or famine. Murphy gets up in there and gets some quick yards, gets to the second level. Watch number five, Matt Curry. Matt Curry has to do a better job blocking downfield. This may go to the end zone. That's right, you gotta hit somebody. You gotta set up your receiver and allow them to block. First and 10 play, Murphy again up the middle. He ran into Gonzalez that time. I'd say Ryan coming off that uh, big performance last week against Penn State's only working on about eight or nine tackles today. And I'm really surprised by this play selection. Uh, you know, the Pittsburgh defense is obviously your opponent, but the clock continues to run. You gotta take your shots downfield and try and conserve the clock. Murphy going in a 5.3 per yards clip. Dangerous play right there for your quarterback as he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Brian Knight, number 57, the sophomore from Buffalo with the tackle. 4.25 to go, Big East football here at Pitt Stadium. Kent, the golden flashes from the Mid-American Conference paying a visit, Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic, and John Sanders with him. And number 57 for the Pitt defense, Brian Knight is an interesting story. Came here as a wide receiver. Last year was a linebacker, and now has eaten himself into a down three-point stance. <laughs> Third down at seven at the 19. Let's see if he impacts on this play. Davis throws, poorly thrown, to his receiver, number five, Matt Curry. You've got to kick the field goal right now. At some point, you need a field goal to send it into overtime. Well, they're down 11. Field goal would make it 24-16. Then you got a and touchdown and a two-point conversion. Two. You got to think way ahead, sure. Dave. You got to have that football mentality, right? Just checking the math. Just checking the math. 351 to go. Dean Pease has some decisions to make. We'll see what. 352 to go. And the Kent Golden flashes. Dave Pavich going for a field goal. He's hit two from 37 and 33. This will be from 36 yards. Jim Les, the holder. Snap, here's the kick. Got a lot into it. And the kick is good. Pavich with three field goals on the day. Makes it 24-16 with 3.47 to go in the ball game. Pavich has done a good job. I don't understand the use of the timeout. If you're going to kick the field goal, bring your field goal unit on, kick the football, keep your three timeouts, you're going to have to take some chances on defense this next series. 24 to 16. And let's take a look at the special teams here. Jeff Bostick used to do this. Talk about it. Well, you talk about the kicker, and it's a really a three-part thing. Snap, kick, and the hold. And typically, what happens, the kicker takes all the glory, but it takes all three of them. Uh, we talked about Morgan Cotter earlier, the long snapper, the holder, Jim Les, the punter, and Pavich. And this whole operation, snap, hold, and kick, should take about 1.2, 1.3 seconds. I have, a, I have a, a great love for people that are great holders. And I happened to play for one uh, that was phenomenal. You listen to him every Sunday night, Joe Theismann, and, and I don't like to give him any props, believe me. <laughs> Joe Theismann. He'll give himself enough. Exactly. Joe Theismann was a phenomenal holder. Walt Harris got his uh, good hands people ready for what appears to be the inevitable keep, onside kick. Keep that thought, good hands. If they recover the ball, it's the good hands team. If they don't recover it, they may want to walk home. Exactly. This is very much a surprise. Kent in this ball game. There's Pavich. Boy, he got way too much air under that, do you think? Let's see if their catch is made at the 42-yard line by Hank Poteet. Got a penalty flag down. Can't get much better hands than Hank Poteet on the special teams for Pittsburgh. Pavich. Gonna lob one in there. Probably offsides on Kent, it would be my guess. Not from where the flag was thrown. It looks like it may have, have bumped the, uh, uh, the receiver. receiver on the fair catch. That's going to be a pretty picky call if it is. They're talking to the quarterback, so it's against Kent. But right now, the ball 
Either way, Pitt's going to have it in good shape. There were two penalties against the kicking team. Offsides on the kickers. That penalty is declined. We had interference with the opportunity to receive a kick. That penalty is accepted. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the catch. First down. But Pittsburgh's got 3.42 to run out here in an eight-point game. That seems like a pretty petty call. Yeah. You know, you didn't hit the guy, you didn't knock him down, and you know, no harm, no foul, right? That's right. You yeah, breathed on him a little hard, and you get by the point. There's look at Matt Rail, the middle linebacker. They're going to be looking to strip the ball here. You know, Pitt's going to keep it on the ground. Barlow fights his way. He may break it. This could be the ball game right here. Adios, Kent. Barlow, touchdown, Pittsburgh. Game over. Touchdown. 57 yards on the run. Kevin Barlow adds to his career rushing total for a single game. The six foot one, 235 pound junior. We talk about it. The Kent defense had to take some risk and they had to take some gambles. They bring their secondary up. They try and get them involved in the run defense. Dean Pease is not happy about what happened. Barlow, you have to like the way he runs the football. Big play and a heartbreaker for Dean Pease. Broke that one into the secondary. Once he got past that first wave, he looked up. He said, nobody home. Latif Grimm is the injured player. Here's Barlow, and this is the play that broke Kent's back. A little bit of misdirection. Line going one way, running back going the other. It shows you the power of his legs. Two Kent defenders bounce off his, look at his eyes. That's the one thing about a running back. Extraordinary vision. Very wide-eyed. Good job by the young man. Big day, he'll sleep well tonight. Two TD runs of 61 and 57 yards today. The good thing the ground game was working because the passing game was pretty ineffective today for Pittsburgh. Nick Watts for the point after. Somebody got a piece of it and it's no good. So the point after is no good. Our Dodge player of the game, Kevin Barlow, congratulations. 16 carries, 194 yards and two TDs, the runs of 61 and 57 yards and that buck 94 is a career high 30 to 16 i believe it was number 92 richard bender that blocked that uh, kick for pittsburgh 332 to go dean pease's dream of getting his first victory as a collegiate head coach starting the pretty much uh, slithered away here. I like one thing that he's done though, Dave. He's got young football players that he's playing and he's gonna lose, he's gonna lose with some uh, young people. Larry Coyer. That's Hank Poteet right there. Larry Coyer's let's go to work helmet. And there's Coyer right there in the middle with the gray hair and the glasses. If I'm gonna wear that helmet, you better put a chin strap on it. <laughs> And that is hung from the uh, goalpost every practice. It looks like it's been dropped a few times. Mm -hmm. Hopefully with nobody in it. There's the kick, Shoemaker, driven back into the end zone, and he'll take a knee, and they'll take their chances. Putting the ball in play from the 20. A penalty flag, and would you believe there's some, they say some extracurriculars, Eve Dussault. Number 28, locked up with Bianco, or Panko rather, there's Moran, he's involved as well. They double teamed Panko, and on the way up, he got a little push. He got a little shove that is gonna cost him a 15 yard penalty. So he's trying to explain it, but the one thing about penalties like this, they always get the second guy. After the All play was the time. over, personal foul on the kicking team, 15 yard penalty, first down. Panko's a 
special teams uh, killer out there, is it? See, they didn't realize it, that there were two guys from Kent that had him on the turf, and they were kind of like giving him the business. Ben Dreif says he's giving him the business, okay? <laughs> they were giving him the business, and Mr. Ponko said, you know what, I don't have to take this any longer. They don't see the first one, they always see the uh, second. It never one. fails. Never fails. 327 left on the clock. Kent in a 14 point hole here. They have played well today. Screen outside dropped by Shoemaker. Shoemaker had a good day. Six catches, 47 yards. Drop that one. Second down for the Golden Flashes. At some point, you got to look for a deep, deep pattern. Sideline. Catch made by Matt Curry. Steps out of bounds. Let's see if they're going to mark him inches short of a first down. Kent's not beaten a Division 1A non-conference opponent since 1988. And that goes all the way back to a win in the opener in 88 against Youngstown State. This is the first and 10 play from the 45. Dinkins had it. And then went right through the hands of the Kent receiver, Joshua Bostic. DJ Dink Jenkins Dinkins had six written on his mind right there. The ball that hung up into the air. Uh, Davis, a little bit late throwing this ball, rolls to his right. The senior safety, you know, he can sense the touchdown right there. Yeah, he was already hit his feet set to pull it and get going. Shoemaker did a good job of playing defensive back. 3.13 to go, second down and 10 for the 45. Ponko coming on the blitz to pick him up. Davis has to reload. That went right through the hands of Julian Graham, who dropped back into coverage. That's why Julian Graham is in a three-point stance. <laughs> His hands are Teflon. Nothing will stick to him. Look, he's going he's gonna to go over to the sideline and plead his case. Well, you see what happened. He knows his teammates <laughs> are going to dog him out over this one. Well, I hear about that all night. Third down and 10 for Jose Davis and Kent. They show the safety blitz. They bring it. It's picked up. Davis down the middle, down the sideline. He's got a man wide open. Joshua Boston, first down, Kent to the 25-yard line with exactly three minutes to go. Looks to be a blown coverage. See that little crossing route? That's, That's where the it. confusion came from. Zone defense trying to play soft and, and keep everything in front of you. Wonder what happens if he catches him in stride. You bet it's six. Davis. That's almost picked off. That would have been a, a race for six there for Rich. Be the first one to tell you, should have had it. I'll tell you what, there would have been about three interceptions the last two drives if the Pittsburgh defenders could catch the football. Mr. Graham, Mr. Rich, and Mr. Dinkins. It was that little drill we were at. We saw one young a player having to run yesterday that and it's a 50 yard, 50 yard crawling on all four to clean the slate, they said. <laughs> I think they may have to, they're dropping those sixes. Third down, second down to 10 at the 25. Davis put a lot of juice on that, and what a hit. What a hit. DJ Dinkins all up in the face of Shoemaker. Goodness gracious. How did he hold on? That one will be on all the highlights this coming year. DJ Dinkins, the big safety, six foot four. 235 unloads. That's a snot bubbler right there. Mm -hmm. You know, you got stuff just coming out of your place. I'm not going to explain it. I think uh, once is enough. <laughs> Davis off the back foot throws and completes it. 
to number two for Kent. That's James Gamble. Haven't seen much of James this afternoon. 2.18 to go. Kent down to the 11-yard line. This is when safeties love playing football. They can play back at center field and play soft, come up with some big hits. Davis takes it down, five to the one-yard line, put his head down and denied the touchdown right at the goal line. Ramon Walker with the hit on him, as did Ryan Gonzalez. If they get this thing in the end zone, Dave, this game may not be over. Two minutes and five seconds. You put the uh, touchdown in there, kick the extra point. You might have a good point there. 2.05 to go. Kent down two scores. Well, Dean Pease has his team down inside the one yard line. 2.05 to go. 30 to 16. Jose Davis, the quarterback. He'll take it himself, and he's in for the touchdown. Kent showing a lot of fight here today. 30 to 22 with 2.01 to go. And the touchdown set up by the tipped Terman pass that the young freshman picks off and gives his team an opportunity to stay in this game. We're going to see that uh, onside kicking uh, unit again. I hope they put the ball on the ground and start, instead of trying to hit that little flubber. This is point after by Dave Pavich. Big extra point. Sure is. Put down and through. 30 to 23 with 2.01 to go. This is when you've got an athletic quarterback. See all the offensive linemen angling into the center, trying to make a, uh, this is a scrum. And Jose Davis is certainly uh, fits the bill as an athletic quarterback, gets the thing in there. Two minutes and one seconds to go. There's only a seven point difference. I've seen stranger things happen. Sure enough. 10 plays, 65 yards and 131 for the Kent Golden Flashes. Let's go down the sidelines and uh, John Sanders. All right, thank you very much, Dave. You know, this is the final year we've talked about it after 75 seasons. There are some facts and figures about this venerable old stadium. And as it is demolished and torn down piece by piece, it's being sold and auctioned off. For example, if you want some script letters from the stadium, bidding starts at $5,000. How about a block letter? $4,000. Would you like a will call sign over the ticket window? $250 will work, and you can even, if you want to, unlock that pocketbook and buy part of the locker room carpet. It will all be sold. It's all available, and then the point after the uh, onside kick is covered by Greg the Bolt. Greg the uh, punter. Greg the Bolt. Who everybody saw last week. I'll tell you what, he maintained his poise and his composure last week in the face of LeVar Arrington. Put a little, he said, put a little wrestling hold on him, trying to get a one-pointer. No, he was trying to get loose. <laughs> you know, it's kind of sad to see these old stadiums leave, but in the interest of Pittsburgh football, young kids that come in here, they like to see, you know, flashy stadiums with luxury boxes, and, and that's what this school has to do to take the next step up. Pittsburgh looking to run out the clock. Goings gets the carry. He is tough, isn't he? Slugs it out. About six yards on the right side. Nothing fancy about him. McCullough with the tackle. Penn State. That is their second timeout of the half. And Kent's got one timeout remaining. 148 to go in the ballgame. Pittsburgh holding on to a seven-point lead. This is a tough game to play when you're winning. Can you imagine the coaching staff, Dean Pease, all his coaches going back to work week in, week out, and not enjoying any success when they're winning football games? Pease is working it hard, isn't he? 148 to go, fourth quarter. Next week, we will be at the Boston College Rutgers game. Big East Conference action. 12 noon start, check your local listings. West Virginia 
Worn out today by Maryland's at Syracuse, Miami, East Carolina, Temple Marshall. That will be a toughie for the Owls. Thursday night, Clemson, Jeff Bostick's alma mater, will be in Blacksburg, Virginia, to take on the Hokies. And they will have their hands full. Virginia Tech is a very good football team. Good looking to run out the clock. Barlow again. Barlow, nice job. As he picks up the first down. Barlow across the 40, down Thirty to twenty-three, Pittsburgh over Kent here in our Big East Football Conference game of the week. Pittsburgh looking to run out the clock. Kent with one timeout remaining. Clock stop. We look at Barlow. Barlow's with has one hundred ninety-nine yards. That pushes him right to 200 at one yard game. Kent uses his final timeout. Timeout, Kent State. That is the last timeout of the half. Barlow, 18 carries, 200 yards, and two touchdowns. He's worn out Dean Pease and Kent. Last time a 200 yard rusher for for uh, Pittsburgh was Billy West. They put up 231 against Ohio U back in September of 94. BC has avenged last year's heartbreaking loss. They win at Navy 14-10. The largest crowd in Naval Academy history. They like their football down there. You're going to see this Kent defense. Everybody going for the big strip here now. 113 to go. Down a touchdown and no times out remaining. I'm going to go out on the limb and say that this Kent football squad wins a game this year. I've been very impressed with the way they're coached. When they get into the conference game, the uh, conference schedule next week against Bowling Green, that'll be at Kent. And they'll have an opportunity to win that game. 1.13 to go. Barlow the carry, Barlow with more yardage. Gets inside the 30. Kent.